camaraderie for us, and we understand each other and the way we coach and, and our styles, and so it really helps out. While the numbers are low, you are very impressed with your core players, so to speak. Uh, most definitely, and our numbers are low due to the fact that we have three back-to-back-to-back classes that are lowest classes they've had here in Hoisington in a long time, and, and so we're actually one kid away from being 2A. Uh, and, and so, yeah, we got some low numbers, but at the same time, our, our 15 seniors are just right there, ready to go, and are taking great leadership with this. Unfortunately, the biggest class in the district is in 8th grade, so next year we won't have this problem. Yes, our, and actually our 7th, 8th grade team has about 44 kids out where we only have 33 in four classes, so it's it's a very interesting there. Speaking of tonight's ga- contest, it is the Great Bend Panthers. Obviously, you know what Bo Black is going to do rather well. Uh, definitely, and they actually changed their offense a little bit last year because of the run game, and, and I, we have a feeling that they're going to have the same kind of style, but... I know what he brings to the table in the effort and the enthusiasm that he asks his team to play, to play with, and, and we hope to match that, if not exceed that tonight. They have their leading rusher back, Josh Lopez. Josh is uh, on film. He's a very hard runner. He runs, he runs low to the ground, and so our goal is just to contain him and make sure he's in control. And at the same time, they also have Jonathan Allende coming back, who is their speed. And honestly, he's probably faster than almost everybody on our team, but as long as we can contain him with our technique, I think we'll be fine. And the strength of your defense is probably the four linebackers. Our four linebacking core is, is definitely a great strength, but also our two safeties with Jacob Durrett and Hagen Hanslick, it, it just makes it a great uh, secondary that we have. And uh, Chance and Nolan being able to be at those corners, we, we actually have, with eight returning starters on that defense, we're very confident in our defense. Now you did tell me this off summer that you thought you might not take a snap under center. Well, now that the game's getting ready to start, we do not plan to be under center at all this year. Um, we actually do have a little bit in for close, close yarded situations, which any spread team will. But having Hagen as uh, moving to our quarterback position and him but returning as the leading rusher for our team, it would, would be stupid to put him under center and take the ball away from him. And the offensive line is pretty experienced. Definitely. The offensive line was able to move into the spread very easy. Uh, the only, we really only added zone from, from the past, and so this is a little new style offense, but at the same time it's still the same core fundamentals and concepts, and, and we have a great experience line coming back. And speaking of injuries, kind of an odd week as far as injuries with Kate and Janice, Zach, but he's going to play. Yeah, at one point he was never going to play football or wrestling again, and at another point, uh, that changed, and we we uh, were able to. He was able to figure it out. His family did a great job of getting what what kind of support and what kind of uh, uh, analysis they needed to be secure in what his decision was. And we look forward to having him on the field. Well, good luck, and we'll talk to you after the game. All right, thank you, sir. Head coach of the Hoisington Cardinals, Jason Ingram. We'll be back with more of the Gambino's pregame show after this. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Great Bend Feeding, ILS Farms, and Innovative Livestock Services are pleased to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Sports on KHOK. To the players, parents, coaches, and patrons, all the best this season and in the future from Innovative Livestock Services, ILS Farms, and Great Bend Feeding. It's Gambino's Pizza Day today. Gambino's Pizza of Hoisington says take a break from cooking and dine in with them while enjoying something delicious from their daily buffet. The buffet is available for lunch 11 to 2 and every night 5 to 8. No lunch buffet on Sundays. Gambino's Pizza on Main Street in Hoisington. You're going to love it. Case Carquest in Hoisington is a proud sponsor of the Cardinals. Stop by for all your auto trucks, agriculture parts, hydraulic fittings, and hoses. And don't forget the full line of grasshopper lawnmowers. Go Cardinals. Suffering with headaches and back pain? There is help. Dr. Chad Beck with Beck Chiropractic is there when you need relief from life's aches and pains. Beck Chiropractic also specializing in sports medicine and proudly supports Cardinal Sports. Beck Chiropractic, downtown Hoisington. It's Gambino's Pizza Day today. Gambino's Pizza of Hoisington says take a break from cooking and dine in with them while enjoying something delicious from their daily buffet. The buffet is available for lunch 11 to 2 and every night 5 to 8. No lunch buffet on Sundays. Gambino's Pizza in Hoisington. You can dine in, we can deliver, or you can pick it up on your way home. 653-4369. Good food, good friends at your locally owned and operated Gambino's Pizza on Main Street in Hoisington. You're going to love it. And welcome back to Elton Brown Field in Hoisington. I'm Mike Kesher. Joining me shortly will be color analyst Dr. Blake Harris. A reminder, if you're coming over from Great Bend or if you're in the area, even from Hoisington, you can park at the Activity Center parking lot and catch the bus over uh, because looking outside the press box, looks like Hoisington's side of the stands is fairly full. The Great Bend side has a couple spots open and there are several people 
standing, and as I made a comment on Sports Day today with Steve Webster, wouldn't hurt to bring your own chair to tonight's contest. And now, without further ado, here is the longtime color analyst of Hoistington Sports. He is the voice of a generation, Dr. Blake Harris. <laughs> uh, welcome, Mike, back to another season. Uh, no better time to be up here in the broadcast booth. Labor Day weekend, huge weekend in Hoisington, and for the last few years, we've started to have football games this weekend, and uh, you bring great band Panthers into town. You know, it's been since the early 50s, late 40s. Since Is that when it has been? I didn't check, but late, I figured it was 50, 60, somewhere in there. I, I think it's earlier than that. Really? Uh, you know, I know really, Dean Barrett said since the mid-60s anyway, they have not played. Boy, I so, don't remember that. He, but no, I mean, before. It's had to be before. It's a that, long so. time yeah. ago. And, you know, but, you know, Great Bend, it's not a, you know, it's understandable. Great Bend's a 5A school, you know, pretty close to being 6A. Hoisington's dropped down with our fluctuating class size, almost 2A school this year. Pretty good shot. It will be 2A in basketball and volleyball. Well, so. you know, and, and, you know, it's understandable. Yep. But, uh, you know, our classes are getting bigger in the in the earlier grades. So, but you never know where they're going to draw that line. But it, besides all that, here we are playing Great Bend. And, you know, ever since this game was announced, there has been more talk about this game than any game I can think of ever for a football game in Hoisington High School, maybe uh, except for the 40s when they were – such a powerhouse Hoisington was. But, uh, you know, you bring Gray Bend over and, and you look at their roster, they have more kids in their senior class than they do, we do on our whole team almost. And they're in a competitive league. They were 4-4 four and four last year, but they play Hayes, they play Dodge City, they play McPherson. You know, huge powerhouse schools in 5A, and they were competitive 4-4, four and four, almost beat Hayes last year. How do you compete with that? Well, you, you look at things, you know, everyone says, well, there's only 11 people on the field. But you look at our soap scrimmage, you know, we had ones going against what? We didn't have twos. Exactly, there are no twos. Because uh, our one and twos are the same players. And Great Ben went one against two, two against three, three against four, three against uh, the freshman uh, JV, and then they switched around. You know, they have, a, 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 as you would expect, a full roster and able to do those kind of things, and consequently, they also have offense and defense. They have some players that play both ways just because they're so talented. We figure there's about three or four going both ways for both ways. Washington's got like ten or if not ten, eleven. The whole team, yeah. really. And, you know, I, put, I, I agree with a lot of people. Our senior class is an outstanding senior class. What the difference is going to be is, you know, I don't look about the size of the player. I look about the depth of the team and the speed of the team. And Great Bend has a lot of speed, and, of course, they have a lot of depth. You know, can we get through this game without getting injured? I think, you know, Great Bend, obviously, if the game goes a long ways, we're going to get worn out because we have to play so many kids both sides of the ball. And special and teams as well. Special I mean, teams, the same thing. They have their own special exactly. teams. Exactly, Washington doesn't. And we have our starters playing special Other teams. Other than Hagen and Chance, I think is what Coach Ingram told me today, that Hagen and Chance won't play special teams. Well, it's because he has to get them off the field. Yeah, they have to rest sometimes, and they have to protect against injuries, such key players. Great Bend has, you know, you said the powerhouse runner they have. Well, I heard just in the last couple of days he can run a 4 7 40. They have a kid on defense that can run a 4-5. You know, I doubt, and and the kid, the, the big, uh, I, uh, what's his name, Lopez? Josh Lopez. You know, 5'9", 5'10", 220 pounds. He can, he can run a 4-7-40. Do we have anyone on our team that can run a 4-7-40? I don't know. Kid on defense doesn't even play offense, and he runs a 4-5. So can we contain the speed of great band early on in the game? Is it going to get out of hand early on? It depends on the speed and the depth and how that affects our Cardinal football team. You know, uh, looking on through the season, if you know, if we can stay injury-free, I, I feel like we can compete against anyone. Against a team like Great Band that has so much depth and so much speed, I don't know. But other teams like Scott City, other teams around the state, Scott City plays liberal. They play... Uh, they play somewhat Dodge. I don't know if they play Dodge. They're not City. playing Garden City this year. Not playing Garden City, but you know they measure up against those teams. And Scott City, parentally, is one of the best teams in Class 3A or 4A state. 
So this is a place for us to measure up. Hopefully we can get through this uh, injury free and stick with great men for a while. It's, it's nice to have this rivalry back. There's some questions involved in it that everyone's talked about all summer long, and I won't get into all those. Everyone knows them. But it'll be fun to see how we match up. I really feel like our top 15 players are pretty darn good. Uh, we have size. We have good speed. We don't have any real burners on our team, and that's where if, if Great Bang can get out and get out of our containment and use that speed, then it's going to be a long night for the Cardinals. If it goes into the second half and it's a close game, depth is really going to hurt the Hoisington Cardinals. But, you know, here we are. We've talked about it. A lot of questions, but it's uh, Labor Day weekend, and the heat has come back. It's not fall yet. And, uh, but it's going to be fun to watch, Mike. It's a fun to always start the season. Uh, look forward to fall sports, volleyball, cross country, golf, and now football here coming up on Friday night. Freeze the keys to the game brought to you by Manweller Chevrolet. Stop by and see Manweller Chevrolet. They've been serving Central Kansans for over eight decades. Visit www.mchevy.com. That's Manweller Chevrolet in Hoisington. Also a new sponsor to the pregame show is Gambino's Pizza. Stop by Gambino's this weekend. They have the buffet going on most of the weekend and going off the top of my head, I think it's 11 to 2 during the afternoon and 5 to 7 or something in the evenings. I'll have to get more specific times on those. But Gambinos will have a buffet going most of this Labor Day weekend. We'll be back to take a look at your starting line for tonight's contest. After this, you're listening to Hoisington Cardinal Football on 100.7 Eagle Country. Cardinal Pharmacy is your locally owned Healthmark Pharmacy and proud supporter of the Hoisington Cardinals. At Healthmark Pharmacy, they take time to get to know you and answer any questions you may have. Caring for you and about you. Cardinal Pharmacy. Go get them, Cardinals. First Kansas Bank, Great Bend, Hoisington, Claflin, member FDIC. Our tradition, we have one mission. First Kansas Bank, we're people you know. When you're not performing at the top of your game, Clara Barton Therapy Services can evaluate and design a treatment program that will keep the Cardinal athletes and their supporters in the game. Therapy Services, Clara Barton Hospital and Medical Clinic. USD 431 Hoisington Public Schools provides all students an education that supplies necessary skills for lifetime learning and prepares them for their future. Each student will be provided an environment in which they can learn to their full potential. Hoisington Public Schools. Like a good neighbor, Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance has always been there to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Athletics. She's also there to help you with your insurance coverage. Auto, home, health, and life. State Farm is there for you. Kathy Burt, State Farm Insurance, South Main, Hoisington. Flyover Cafe in Sioux Sink has something for everyone in the month of September. With Biker Breakfast Day, September 9th, and Prime Rib that night at 5. Then it's Encore Sound, Saturday, September 22nd. Flyover Cafe supports all Hoisington students and athletics. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country, KHOK, Hoisington, Great Bend. Welcome back to Elton Brown Field in Hoisington alongside Dr. Blake Harris. Now Mike Kesher, studio engineer this evening, Dwayne Cooper. It's the start of the 2012 Kansas high school football season. And tonight's contest, the Great Bend Panthers have traveled 10 miles north on Highway 281 to take on the Hoisington Cardinals. Let's take a look at your starters first for the Panthers under 11th year head coach Bo Black. 74 and 38 in Bo's 11 years at the high school in Great Bend. Four and four last year with four loss, with three of the four losses by 13 points. They did miss the playoffs for the second consecutive year. 2006, Bo Black led Great Bend to a state runner-up in Class 5A. Up front, they'll start this way. The tackles will be Nick Warren, 6'4", 251-pound senior, and Wyatt Bayless, 6'6", 227-pound senior. The guards up front for Great Bend, Cody Hessel, a 6'3", 289-pound senior, and Lucas Westoff. 6'3", 210-pound senior. And the center for Great Bend is Gabe Joyner, 6'178-pound senior. The quarterback for the Great Bend Panthers, his first-year quarterback will be a junior, Bryce Beck, 5'10", 157 pounds. The wideouts will be a Zach Reynolds, 5'10", 170 pounds junior. And Mitch Johnson, 6'160-pound senior. In the backfield will be Jonathan Alinde, 5'8", 161-pound junior. Rushed the ball 45 times last year for 221 yards and a couple of touchdowns. His season high was 14 carries, 99 yards versus Liberal. And the back that Hoisington needs to be concerned about, Josh Lopez, 5'10", 
215 pound senior, 140 carries, 692 yards, nine touchdowns, and rushed for over 100 yards in four of his five, la the five last games for Great Bam. Our offensive starters for Jason Ingram and the Hoisington Cardinals. Jason in his second year at Hoisington, five and four last year. They did miss the playoffs for the second consecutive season. They'll start up front. Caden Janisak, six foot, 210 pound senior, along with Trevor Williams, 5'11, 240 pound senior. The guards will be Peyton Bullard, 6'1, 210 pound senior, and Darren Poland, 6'2, 225 pound junior. And the center will be Cody Richter, 5'9, 210 pound senior. In the backfield for Hoisington will be Chance Damel, 5'8, 160 pound senior, 12 carries last year for 64 yards. Avery Urban will start as the fullback in the Hoisington offense, six foot, 200 pound junior. He had four receptions last year out of a tight end position for 25 yards. And the quarterback will be Hagen Hanslick, the 5'10", 190 pound senior, full time fullback, full, for full time quarterback now as he kind of worked a lot out of the Cardinal or Wildcat formation last year. The uh, 190 pound senior, 227 carries, 1,463 yards, 14 touchdowns. And the wideouts for Hoisington, Jacob Durrett, 6'3", 175 pound senior, and Jeffrey Kaiser, 5'10", 170 pound senior. You know, Mike, uh, one thing we, we talked about a little bit, the speed, and the speed of the great man backfield is at every position. Bryce Beck is another very fast player, and he runs, he's at the quarterback position. It's not just the fullback, it also is the wingback and the quarterback. All, all of them have great speed, and so it's, you have to play assignment sound football, and in our scheme, that means the linebackers, and it would be nice if some of our down people could get cross line of scrimmage and disrupt the play as it develops, but Great Bend is loaded at speed at every position, and that's something that the Cardinals, the main focus of our Cardinal defense is try to keep that speed contained. Full house, full foul on hand tonight, overflow crowd. As you can tell, the band is right in front of us one more time. Looks like the Great Bend Panthers won the toss, elected to receive. Cody Stetler has the pigskin teed up at the 40-yard line. Cody Stetler was informed by Jason Ingram this afternoon, if you could kick the ball into the end zone every time, we would appreciate that. But we'll see what Cody can do here because... The kickoff return team was Coach Ingram's biggest worry. Football about ready to be kicked away as Cody Steller gets the final stretches. Back deep for the Great Bam Panthers. It looks like it will be Jonathan Alinde, one of them, and the other one no, will have to get the number as the officials now signal ball ready for action. We're just about ready to go. I think it's Michael Haynes. Michael Haynes is back there. That is correct. As Stetler approaches the football at the 40-yard line, and the pigskin is in the air. High end over end, Cook going to be taken at the 25-yard line. They're going to fake the reverse, coming to the near sideline, and he gets across the 25-yard line and drops right there. Down first to make the tackle. Looks like it was a Jacob Durrett for the Hoisington Cardinals, the kickoff return man for the Great Bend Panthers as they have a large roster. That was Bryce Hoffmeister. The 173-pound senior. Yeah, nice tackle. Direct gets down. They fake the reverse in the backfield. Uh, Haynes kept the ball. Alendi went the other way. That's become kind of a staple of kickoff returns throughout the state. The first time we saw it, Smith Center did it so well, but now everyone seems to do it. First and ten for Great Bend at their own 25-yard line. They're moving left to right, dressed in their traveling white uniforms, black numerals trimmed in red. Bryce Buck under center of Gabe Joyner. Snap, and they're going to hand off to Lopez. Lopez has the carry, and he's going to be knocked down right at the line of scrimmage, maybe, and lost the yard. Cardinal defense on the right side, right there to meet the big fullback, Josh Lopez. Uh, we'll give him a loss of one on the play, bring up a second up, no gain, second down 10. Yeah, Avery Urban comes in from his linebacker spot. Straight handoff to Lopez, power football, off tackle to the left side. Urban met him right in the hole. Quickly to the line of scrimmage, great Ben. Now Bryce Beck will be in shotgun formation. Two receivers split to either side. They're going to hand off to Alinde coming to the near sideline. He gets the quarter, turned into 30, runs into Jacob Durrett, where he's tackled right there with, hey, from, with help from Kayton Janicek. A gain of about seven across the 30 to the 32 for Jonathan Alinde. That time trying to spread us out. Uh, uh, Bryce Beck, the only one in the backfield. Alinde goes in motion from his wing back spot. They get us isolated, had our defensive end blocked, but Durrett came up from his safety spot, limited to a 
five or six yard play. Uh, call third down and three. Ball at the 20, 37, 32 yard line. Back to Pesce's back. We'll hand off to Lopez on the draw play. Lopez has first down yardage across the 35. Out close to the 40. They'll spot it at the 39. That'll be a gain of seven for Josh Lopez. First, first and ten of the contest for Great Ben. Nice play conceived. Nice play, uh, play played by Great Ben. Nice little draw play. Uh, Beck takes it in the gun, kind of holds the ball up like he's looking, and then just drops it off to his tailback. Big hole right up the middle, first down. No score in the contest, just underway. We played under two minutes. Great Ben with the first possession of the season. Beck now with a full house backfield under center is the junior quarterback, Bryce Beck. Mark Marshall comes in motion. Now the handoff to Lopez. Lopez met at the line of scrimmage by the Cardinals. One of the Cardinals there was. That ain't Bullard, and then I'm not sure who was there first, but Bullard was there to help wrap up the tackler. It's going to be a gain of, uh, we'll call it one, second down nine. Seth Owen, number 79, coming in from his right uh, off guard spot, defensive on the right side of the defensive line. Hit him first, hit him hard, and the card, rest of the Cardinals were right there to bring him down. This 265 pound sophomore, Seth Owens, nice hit, nice play. Coach Chasing and bragging about the hard work that Seth Owen has been putting in after practice, running another 20 minutes after practice is over. Second down and nine, ball at the Great Bend 40-yard line. They'll hand off to Lopez. Lopez gets to the outside this time. He's across the middle field stripe, cut, cuts up to the numbers, and then down inside the Washington 45 to the 44-yard line. That time, Lopez able to get outside. He has a pickup in excess of 17 yards, first and 10 for Great Bend. Yeah, nice play. They just pinched everyone in. Our three, four linebacker set. We had our linebacker on the right side. That nice block over there coming down on him. There was no one out there. The safeties had to bring him down. Nice play, Great Bend. Well blocked on the line of scrimmage. First and 10 at the Great Washington 43-yard line. Great Bend with the first possession of the contest, 9.45 to play in the first quarter. No score. Great Bend. Pitches back this time to Alinde. Alinde tries to get to the outside, has to cut up at the hash marks in this drill. Caden Janice that cut him, turned him back inside, and Nolan McCurry came up, came up in love with Alinde for a loss of about five on the play. Oh, nice play, Caden Janice. He would not be blocked. If he would have been blocked, it would have been a different play. It was keyed on him, getting around him, and he could not get around Caden Janice. He tried to cut back because Janice was there, but the rest of the Cardinal defense was following the play. A loss on the play of three and a half yards. Great play, Janicek. Second down, 13. Ball back to the Washington 47-yard line. Great Ben moving left to right, dressed in their traveling white uniforms. will hand off to Lopez. Lopez right up the middle. Big hole. He's inside the Washington 40, down close to the 37-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 10 for Josh Lopez. A big hole right that up the hole, right up the middle that time for Josh Lopez. Yeah, nice play by Great Ben because it looked like it was going to be a wide play. They had gone wide on the previous two plays. One to the left, one to the right. This time, everyone was going like it was going to be wide. He handed up on a little delay to the fullback right up the middle, caught us, caught us in pursuit, and he cut in behind the, the pursuit of the Cardinals. Lopez, five carries, 35 yards thus far. Third down and five. Hand off to Lopez. This time, he breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Stiff arms the man and gets close to the first down six. I think he has it by about a half a yard. But Lopez, shoving out the right hand and gave a stiff arm to a Cardinal, was able to break a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Uses a stiff arm about two yards downfield, and it's going to be good enough for a great band first down. A five-yard pickup for a Josh Lopez. Now that time we had the play uh, read and diagnosed, just straight handoff, which we've done pretty well on so far tonight, making Great Bend work for their yards. But this time he broke that tackle right at the line of scrimmage. We're able to bring him down, but a nice, uh, nice uh, run by Lopez to break the tackle. 8-10 to play first quarter, no score. Great Bend with the first possession of the contest. Pick, patch, pitch back to Lopez. He's going to fall forward to the 32-yard line, getting off the bottom of the pile for the Hoisington Cardinals. Looks like that was Trevor Williams making the initial hit. That's going to be a pickup of a couple. This drive started at the Hoisington 25. Gray Ben has not thrown a pass yet. After a pickup of two, second down eight. Now something to look for, Mike. Uh, you know, they've been pounding it on the ground, trying to force their will. That time, Trevor Williams from his down lineman spot came in from behind the play because Lopez met a wall when he got to the line of scrimmage, uh, allowing Williams to come from behind the play and bring him down. In motion, Jonathan Linde. They're going to hand off with Linde. He tries to get the corner turn. Now cuts up with the hash marks. He's inside the Hoisington 25, close to the 24-yard line and close to a first down six. 
on the far sideline. It's going to be just short. He's at the 25. That'll be a pickup of seven for Jonathan Alinde. Three carries, 11 yards for the soft junior, Jonathan Alinde. And that uh, shows you what speed will do. We had everyone out there that time, but one cut, his first cut right up the hash marks, went by two or three Cardinals, and he is able to pick up big yards. That speed is something that's hard to practice against, and Alinde showed one cut speed there right up the hash mark. Third down, two from the grave, from the Hoisington 25-yard line. Beck hands off to Lopez. Lopez met in the backfield, making the tackle for the Cardinals. Peyton Buller from the linebacker position. That's a loss of about three on the play, and we'll put Gray Bend in a fourth down, and we'll call it four, the ball back to the Hoisington 27-yard line. When they just line up and try to power the football, all except one broken tackle on this drive, we've held them pretty good that time. He, uh, Peyton Buller came right in the hole and met him before he got back to the line of scrimmage. Great containment by our down defensive lineman, allowing our linebackers to come through the hole. He guessed right and met him head on. 6-15, no score. Great Ben with the first possession of the contest. They have a big fourth down play here. They fake the hand off to Lopez. Beck rolling out to the right, looking downfield. Has a man. It's going to be dropped by the Hoisington Cardinals, but a good drop there by Nolan McCurry. Hoisington holds on the first possession of the contest. Great Ben drives all the way to the Hoisington 26 where the drive stalls. And on the incomplete pass, Hoisington will have a first and 10 with 6.07 to play. And I believe we're going to have a water break. I think we'll probably see a lot of those during the contest with the temperature, as Blake mentioned in the pregame show, starting to rise again up in the upper 90s today, if not low 100s. What a great play by the Cardinals that time in four downs, one big play at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Peyton Bowler drops their big pullback for a loss, and then we just talked about it. We'll look out for a pass. Beck pulled it back out, roll out to the right. Two plays, two things made that play work, Mike. First of all, we had containment on Beck, someone right in his face, not allowing him to run up field. And then Nolan McCurry, was it? Yes. Nolan McCurry, good coverage in the backfield. The pass was a little bit underthrown due to the pressure on the quarterback. He knocks it down in the Hoisington Cardinals. Bent but did not break on that drive, showing a lot of fortitude. Get the ball back. Keep Great Bend out of the end zone on a long drive. But the Hoisington Cardinals have the ball. 12 plays. They drove it from their own 25 to the Hoisington 26 where it stalled. Hoisington will take over possession of the peaks again at their own 26-yard line. Hagen Hanslick will be the quarterback with Chance Dable and Avery Urban next to him. Split out to the near side will be Jeffrey Kaiser with Jacob Durrett to the far sideline. Hoisington will pretty much run a Shotgun formation most of the season, according to the head coach, Jason Ingram. 6.07 to play, first quarter, North score. Washington with the first possession of their season. Up front, Janicek, Williams, Bullard, Poland, and Cody Richter. Now the two backs split out to the far sideline. Hagen Hanslick alone in the backfield. He gets a snap drive, goes right up the middle of the field and drags a couple of tacklers a couple yards as Hunter Harrison, the middle linebacker for Great Bend, the first to reach Hagen Hanslick. A couple of H's there on both sides. It's a two-yard pickup for Hagen Hanslick. Right up the middle, empty backfield, takes the snap. Looks like we're going to the right side. He tries to cut back behind the pursuit. Great Bend was in a five-man line that time, and it looks like they're in a five-man defensive front right now. Gain of two, second and eight. Ball snap goes right through the hands of Hagen Hanslick, but fortunately for Washington, the flag is dropped. I believe we're going to have a penalty against Hoisington. Nope, they're going to say it's against Gray Penn. Offsides against the Panthers. First penalty of the contest is offside, so Hoisington gets a five free yards. And as we mentioned, Blake Harris, and everybody's thoughts were, you know, if Hoisington can keep this close till halftime, we're not sure about the second half because of depth, but Hoisington sticking right with the Panthers here halfway through the first quarter. Real impressed with our defense that first drive. Uh, they, uh, Great Bend marched the ball down the field, but they had to work for almost every first down they got and then were able to come up on downs and stop them. The Cardinals now have a second five thanks to an offsides penalty against Great Bend defense. Ball at their own 32-yard line. Hagen hands like takes the hand off. No, he does hand off to Chance Damon. Damon will be snowed under in the backfield as a off the defensive line of Jace Brock, the 6'2", 255-pound sophomore, leading the charge for the Panthers, and Chance Damo will lose a couple of yards on the play. They're going to give him forward progress to the 31, so that'll be just a loss of one. Brings up a third down and six. Mike, just looking around the stands, you know, we always have a big crowd Labor Day, but having great band here, we have uh, the crowd almost circling the field right now. It's kind of fun to see. The, maybe the biggest crowd we've had in a long, long time. Third down and six. 
Hagen has the shotgun formation, gets the snap, runs up the line of scrimmage, passes over the middle to Cody Steller. Ball was deflected defensively by Gray Ben, and the ball falls to the field turf incomplete. And Hagen Hanslick got the snap, charged the line of scrimmage like he was going to run, but then kind of dumped it off to Cody Steller, but the pass was deflected, and Hoisington forced to punt a three and out. Yeah, it was a call play. He was uh, designed to do that. And unfortunately uh, for the Cardinals, the ball was thrown down low, so it was tipped immediately. If he'd have gotten a little air on that ball, Cody is open for about three steps in timing with the play, but uh, a low throw caused that. Trent Uselton back in Hoisington looked to fake. Now it's going to be caught by Hoisington. Uselton lost the football. Down for Hoisington was Brandon Ball. He had it, but I think Gray Ben might have gotten it back. And they did the rugby-style kick there by oh. Hagen Hansleck, and it will be Great Bend football. A unwise move there by the punt returner, Trent Uselton, for Great Bend. He got a hand on it, and Brandon Ball had it for Hoisington, but was unable to come up with it, and GPHS gets the pigskin back. Yeah, initially I thought what, we're going for a fourth down, but it was a called rugby-style kick with Hansleck kicking the ball. Almost worked to perfection. If he hadn't have stuck his mid up and knocked it down, allowing us to almost recover the fumble, the ball would have been way back. But it worked great for Great Bend as they recover the, the fumble and have a first down and great field position at their own 46-and-a-half yard line. 439 to play first quarter, no, no score. Hoisington and Great Bend, it is the 2012 season opener. They'll do the reverse, this time coming to Alinde. Alinde trying to get to the outside. Turn, he's turned back in at the... Pass marks, a nice defensive job by Hoisington there to get him turned back in. That was Zach Sanders, but Linde close to the first down stick at the 44-yard line. I think the Hoisington crowd may have been wanting a hold right out in front of us, but none called by the official. It is a first down. It's going to be first and 10 for Great Bend, Linde with the carry. That was a great block by Tanner Nealon, the one everyone was looking at, but he kept our safety from or cornerback from coming up and stopping that play. Just a terrific block by that young man. Back back to pass, hands off to Lopez. Lopez looking for some room, and he's going to be buried at the 45-yard line, leading the way for Hoisington. I believe that was the big guy. Everybody's talking about Hoisington, and that was uh, Darren Poland in with a tackle. The junior with a big tackle there. That's a loss of a couple on the play. Yeah, and it brings up a third down, third and two now, as it was a second and short after the, the reverse play. Just up the middle, straight power. Hoisington's holding their own against this great Ben Panther offense. It's one they get through deception or their speed, get in the backfield around the corners that uh, were susceptible. A handoff comes to Milt. They fake the handoff, and Linde and Beck is buried as Seth Owen leads the way. Cody Stetler there as well. And also Darren Pullen again, I believe. Nope, that was Seth Owen. Now we're going to have a flag called as the referee throws it high into the air. Let's we'll see who they're going to call it on. Washington with a big stop as Beck did the old belly handoff where he, he finally pulled it back. Unsportsmanlike contest against the uh, Great Bend Panthers. So that'll march him back another 15 yards. And Great Bend may be a little bit shocked on the far sideline with the intensity of the Hoisington Cardinals early on. Well, I'll tell you what, when they tried to run inside the tackles, we're meeting them head up and winning the, uh, winning the play most of the time. That time they tried a little deception. They're going to go wide. And what that does is it makes the play last longer. And Beck, by the time he pulled that ball out of the fullback coming in front of him to go wide, the Hoisington Cardinal defense was right in his face, ready to tackle the ball carrier or himself, he pulled it back out, and we dropped him right there, forcing the first, the second four-down uh, turnover via the punt. This time, the Great Men Panthers did not get a first down, and the Cardinals get the ball back. Looks like Cody Hessel back in punt formation for the Panthers. Snap is good. The kick's away. It's a high end-over-end kick coming to the near sideline. Poisonton coaches is telling the Great Men, telling the players to get away from it, and Great Ben player... As the ball bounced backwards, the great Ben player ran right by it. He didn't stop but kind of pulled his hands back. And that gained Hoisington another two or three yards as they'll have a first and ten at their own 38-yard line. And Hoisington defense playing very well early on. We have 319 to play in the first quarter. No score. Great Ben and Hoisington. Are we still on, Mike? Yes. On this game, that was a, a terrific four-down stop by the Cardinal defense. They had a uh, second and short. 
They lost yards, then they lost big yards, all due to the Cardinal defense. Penetration from our linebackers and up, up three down linemen. They have to punt the football. The Cardinals have it back. They start as the snap goes to Hagen Hands. Look, Hagen, Hagen off the right side. He's got some yardage across the 45. Still has the legs are turning, and still play is going on. It looks like a rugby scrum out there at that point. And Hagen Hands like probably popped down at the right at the end of the play. The official come in and throws a flag. A lot of time that might be a holding call. It looks like it might be as they're talking to the great bend of players. Ball's at the 47 yard line. It was a gain of about nine for Hagen Hands. Like you know, I kind of. That's too bad because most of the time a whistle's blown a long time before that whistle's blown, and by the end of that play, like you said, it goes against Ray Bain. It's a face mask, the five-yard variety against the Panthers. So that'll be a five-yard markoff and a first down for the Hoisington Cardinals, their first of the ball game. You know, the Hoisington Cardinals uh, that time, uh, you know, I feel sorry for Ray Ben too. Like I say, the, the play was allowed to go quite a while before they blew a whistle. And if you wait long enough, something's going to happen. This time, Ray Ben got caught with the face mask, but it gives Cardinals a first down to Ray Ben territory. At the 48 yard line as we approach the three minute mark of the first quarter. Now back to Hagen Hanslick. He moves off the left side, turns up outside the hash marks, runs over a man at the 40 yard line, down to the 38 yard line. Defensively, therefore, Ray Ben, that was. Greg Burley, a 5'11", 152-pound junior. Hagen Hanslick ran him over, got 10 yards, and is going to be about a half a yard short of the first down marker, I believe. You know that uh, Mr. Burley found out what a lot of teams did last year against this Cardinal uh, team with Hanslick running the ball. You better be able to initiate a hit when you come up to tackle him. If not, he'll run right over you that time. Hanslick ran right over the quarterback. First down. Cardinals have a first down at the Great Bend Panther 38. Don't get the jumpy there, Blake Harris. They're going to measure. Oh, almost done. <laughs> It's early in the season. We're all having our little early in the season. <laughs> One official did signify a first down. Well, I think Great Ben may have asked for him to measure. Uh, uh-huh. And it was also a good time for a water break as I'm sweating and I'm doing all I'm doing is talking. So a little short, it looks like, by that much. Two or three inches. Are we TV now by that much? <laughs> yeah, I can see it. <laughs> so they can. <laughs> Never mind. Well, now that we have this beautiful turf, we can. See the numbers and oh, see boy. the lines. Is it not amazing? It is. I was traveling for work in Northwest Kansas earlier late, earlier this week, and I was in Norton, and I was in another town, and they were out there marking the field. Yeah. And I thought, boy, I bet Hoisington, Mike Madden, and the guys don't miss that at all. No, that uh, was a big job, and no matter how hard they tried, it never really worked that good because it's hard to mark dirt and grass at the same time. They call a second down and short for 2.48 to play. First quarter, no score. Hoisington with their second possession of the contest, and there were a couple of first downs. Hagen Hanslick, shotgun formation. Damo and Urban split to the either side. We'll hand off to Chance. Chance has first down yardage. He's inside the Great Bend 35-yard line down to the 33. The senior running back, Chance Damo, has the first down, the second of the drive for the Cardinals, as the ball will be spotted at the Great Bend 33. Cardinals have a nice little drive going here. Some first downs on the ground. Legitimate plays helped by a face mask penalty after an eight or nine yard gain. But the Cardinals first down deep in Great Bend territory, I would say now at the 32. First down. Boys have been dressed in their home red uniforms, trimmed in a white with white numerals. I'll hand off to Damel. Damel cuts at the hash marks, and he's going to be dropped at the 31 for a gain of a couple on the play. Chance Damel now three carries for six yards. Second down and eight for H.J. Jess as they move it right to left or west to east here. Labor Day weekend in Hoisington. Thank you for joining us as we bring you Hoisington High School football. You know, as this uh, game gets deep into the first quarter, the Cardinals no score. It has to help the Cardinals, you know, how they feel about themselves right now because there's no score. They're in control of the ball right now on a nice drive of their own. They stock Great Bends uh, twice, once after a long drive. The Cardinals have a chance to put up some points first against the Great Bend Panthers. Just under two minutes to play first quarter. The snap back to Hagen Hands like he spins out of a tackle in the backfield now looking for yardage and he's just going to get back and lose just a couple but a nice job by Hagen Hanslick to avoid a large loss. It's going to be a loss of a couple. It could have been five or six but Hagen Hanslick scrambling for his life there in the backfield. Gets back to the 35 yard line. That'll be a loss of four. Bring up a third down as Ethan Henderson makes the tackle. Third down and looks like 17. 
You know, hands like a rare runner that has uh, elusive ability and also has some speed and also has some power at the end of the run. That time was a fake pass and then pulls it back down, tries to go outside. I didn't see the Great Bend player, but one Great player, Great Bend player, stopped that from being a big gainer. Hagen, Hagen's like on the near sideline looking for Jacob Dredd. Passed a little bit too far for uh, Jacob to make the catch. It's going to bring up a fourth down and 12 for Washington. They have the ball at the Great Bend 35-yard line, and see if they're interested to see what head coach Jason Ingram will do. It looks like he's going to bring on the punt team. He wants to make Great Bend go the distance. As if he went for it here, Great Bend would have pretty good field position. Yeah, to be at the 35-yard line, fourth and long, fourth and 12. If we could keep it, you know, kick it out of bounds. Uh, down inside the 10, inside the 20, anywhere. Hanslick is back to punt the ball, trying to gain field position. And Greg Ben doesn't think he's going to punt at all. Hagen with the rugby style kick, kicks it into the right corner. It's going to be a good kick. It's going to bounce about the 13 and go out of bounds about right there. So Washington will make Greg Ben go the distance of the field. No score with 53.9 seconds to play the first quarter. Washington Cardinal football as they take on the Great Ben Panthers. And down to the right of us, Ringing the right side of the truck is all crowd and people. Yeah, it is exciting to see this big crowd. Uh, you know, you don't often see uh, the stands full, and so people are just ringing the football field about two or three deep, about 20 deep over on the Great Ben side, about 10 deep in the end zone to the west. It's, it's exciting. Uh, it's a fun, and uh, so far rewarded with a good football game, Mike. Thus far, Great Bend with 57 yards of total offense. Nine carries, 38 yards for Josh Lopez. Four carries and 21 yards for Jonathan Linde for Hoisington. They have 23 yards of total offense. Hagen Hanslick, four carries for 17 yards and three carries for Chan Stable on six yards. Hagen has attempted a pass, has attempted a couple of passes. Incomplete on both of them. You know, this uh, Hagen Hanslick punting the football, doing the rugby-style kick, that's where he takes it as the punter and then just starts running to his right. It gives him the option to run the football and, and also pooch the ball. He, he, he kicks it on the run like a rugby player would. If you've ever watched the game of rugby, they, they're running with the ball and they'll kick it. But it gives Hagen a little extra dimension out there. If he sees a lane and it happened to be only two or three yards, he might take off and run with it. First and 10 for Great Bend at their own 13-yard line. Hand off to Josh Lopez. He battles out close to the 15-yard line. He's going to be dropped there. Getting off the bottom of the pile for Hoisington like Peyton Bullard, one of the four linebackers. Again, uh, we'll call a three for Josh Lopez as we have 33 seconds played first quarter. Peyton Bullard, what a heck of a football player he is. We called his number all, all the time last year on defense, and we're doing it tonight again. This time he met the big fullback right at the line of scrimmage. He carried him for about two yards, but uh, nice stop by Bullard. No score. Great Bennett and Hoisington closing seconds of the first quarter. Bryce back under center, hands off to Lopez. Lopez between the hash marks, gets close to the 20 yard line. They're gonna stop him about the 19. That'll be a pickup of three. Josh Lopez, that's his 11th carry already. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. We played 12 minutes and it's been a defensive struggle. Hoising to nothing, great bend nothing. We'll be right back. You're listening to Hoising to Cardinal Football on 100.7 Eagle Country. Cardinal Pharmacy is your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy and proud supporter of the Hoisington Cardinals. At Health Mart Pharmacy, they take time to get to know you and answer any questions you may have. Caring for you and about you. Cardinal Pharmacy. Go get them, Cardinals. Here's Paul Snap. For many years, First Kansas Bank has been awarded the highest five-star rating for safety and soundness. Over the years, First Kansas Bank has earned this coveted five-star rating by making high-quality loans and keeping our customers' money safe and sound. Member FDIC. When you're not performing at the top of your game, Clara Barton Therapy Services can evaluate and design a treatment program that will keep the Cardinal athletes and their supporters in the game. Therapy Services, Clara Barton Hospital and Medical Clinic. Back to Elton and Brown, Phil and Hoisington, alongside Dr. Blake Harris. I'm Mike Hester. Studio engineer this evening is Dwayne Cooper. Great Bend faces a third down. We'll call a four. Ball at their own 19-yard line. Great Bend with a couple of possessions in the ball game. They had it inside the Hoisington 20 on their first possession, but Hoisington was able to force a turnover on down. The second possession, Great Bend had to punt. Great Bend has forced Hoisington to punt on both.
most of their possessions. Great Bend started this drive at their own 13-yard line. They have it now third down. We'll call it four. Ball at the 19-yard line. Yeah, two plays to the big tail back right up the middle. Both times Peyton Bullard brought him down. He picked up three yards of pop. We have now third and a long three coming up for Great Bend as they have the whole field to go again to score the football as they change formations, go back into the gun. Looks like Matt Marshall will be quarterback here to start the second quarter. He's back to pass, looking downfield. Has a man is over the middle. It's going to be caught over there. Nice catch across the middle of the field, making the catch. That was Bryce Beck, so Marshall to Beck. And it's a first down for the Panthers across the 30-yard line to the 31-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 12, Marshall to Beck. Looks like they've decided to try to open up their ground game. They're going to start passing the football. That time, no pressure on the quarterback. I think they kind of caught us a little bit by surprise that time, but their line able to hold us out. He had plenty of time. Beck came in from the right side across the middle. Perfect pass, went high to get it, first down. Empty backfield, Beck has three receivers split to the far sideline. They'll hand off to the receiver in motion. Half Brock out there, and he's buried for a loss of a couple on the play. Leading the way for a hoist. It looks like Kate Janicek, Seth Owen also there. And coming up from a linebacker position, and that was one of the standard boys. That's a loss of one on the play, second down and 11. Yeah, our Cardinal defense has played the run outstanding, except for a couple plays. One time a speed move got us, and the other time a nice play right up the middle where we misread it. We've really held the run down against this great bend offense. Three receivers to the near sideline, one to the far sideline. There's a pass over the head of Jonathan Alinde, but a nice job by the Hoisington Cardinals defensive back. That was a exactly. Zach Sanders who stepped into the passing lane like he would in basketball. The pass was high. And it's going to bring up a third down and 12. Yeah, well, he had to throw it higher. Sanders was there with the intercept of the ball, and he just threw it up over our defender who was right in between the quarterback and the receiver. The receiver tried to make a one-handed grab at it, but uh, just great read by Zach Sanders that time on this flare-out pass to the wide receiver. Third down, 12. Great Ben with a first down on the drive. Have to convert here on third down. Back, back to pass takes up, and he's going to be sacked. Seth Owen right there, wrestles him to the ground. No gain on the play as Beck able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice job defensively downfield by the Washington Cardinals. Beck had a chance to scan the field, but couldn't find anybody, tuck it and run, and he's knocked down for a gain of no gain, for, for no gain on the play, fourth down. Yeah, our sophomore Seth Owen, who has been drawn the praise of the coaching staff all summer long for the work he's put in and the work he's put in in practice, really a great addition to this stout Cardinal defense senior laden but get the sophomore in there and he's making some plays too Nick Nick Warren back to punt for great Ben we're scoreless just started in the second quarter Warren gets off a spiral what a kick by Nick Warren this one hits at the 20 bounces straight up Hoisington will let a bounce he takes the Hoisington bounce back to the 25 yard line so what a punt there uh, by my count that's a 56 yard punt off the foot of Nick Warren Ben Torsington back at their own 25 yard line where maybe they thought they might get decent field position, but the punt by Warren puts Torsington back at their own 25. Yeah, it was a beauty. Spiral uh, high, went over our heads almost immediately. Our, our two deep men did the smart thing and didn't try to field the football, and it took a cardinal bounce once it hit and gave us a little a little positive yards after it hit. It could have bounced towards the goal line. We'd be back there around the 10. But what a kick by Nick Warren. 46 yards. 46 line. yards, spiral, beautiful kick. First and 10 for Washington at their own 25-yard line. We're scoreless. 10-14 to play second quarter. Hagen Hanslick in the shotgun formation. Well, they will be most of the year. Avery Urban comes in motion. Hagen gets it. He'll follow Avery around the left side. Spins out of a tackle. He's across the 35-yard line. Sits over the man. He's to the 40. Cuts back at the numbers. Runs over a man at the 45 and is out to the 46-yard line. Making the tackle for the Panthers. That was uh, Ethan Henderson, but a nice stiff arm there by Hagen has like he picked up 22 on the play. Yeah, and like we said earlier in the game, if you're going to take on take on this young man one on one, you better be able to initiate contact. And uh, a couple of those kids couldn't even get to him because of stiff arm. He hesitated one, let one go by, nice move, and then turns it upfield. What a run by Hagen Hanslick. First down, the Cardinals at the 40, their own 48. Pick up a 22 for Hagen. Now five carries, <coughs> 39 yards. And the yellow hanky finds its way onto the field turf here at Hoisington. We're going to have a penalty against the Hoisington Cardinals. That'll be the first penalty against Hoisington. 
It'll be a five-yard markup, I believe. See if I can find that on my handy-dandy sheet. Uh, he came across his chest. Illegal substitution, maybe? Very yeah. good. Dr. Harris. That's too bad. The uh, Cardinals uh, still have good field position, but now it's first and 15 instead of first and 10. And the longer they stay with the Great Bend, the more confidence they gain. 9.45 to play, second quarter, no score. Hoisington and Great Bend in the 2012 football season opener. Hagen Hansleck, shotgun formation, two receivers split to either side. Jacob Direct comes in motion. They'll hand off to Red. Coming to the near sideline. He cuts up with the numbers. Lost the football. Oh, still has that. That was a helmet. That was a helmet. And Durrett across the 45 to the 47 yard line. I thought I saw something fly out of there. Fortunately for Washington, it was a helmet and not the pick shit. But Jacob Durrett with a pick up of five. It'll be second down and 10. A nice play. Uh, kind of like out of the great band play. Brooke, wide receiver in motion in front of the quarterback who's in the shotgun set. As soon as the quarterback gets the ball, the receiver's right in front of him, gives him the ball. We have blockers out in front. Jacob makes a nice cut on the end, uh, on the corner of that play, and picks up five yards. Washington moving left to right, or east to west here, Elton Brown Field on a Friday night. Looking straight into the sun is Hagen Hanslick. Second down and 10 from the 47-yard line. Hagen with the snap, goes over the middle of Cody Stetler. Cody had it in his hands and then dropped it. Coming up defensively with Greg Burley. He belted Cody Stetler, who's a little bit slow getting up. And now we have a flag on the play. Maybe a little taunting there by Greg Bend. We'll see. As it was a late flag, the play was over. We were discussing this beforehand about the officials, whether it's a quote a five or six eight crew who maybe will let a little more get away them get away with more it will be an unsportsmanlike contest that's the second one against the great bend panther that's for 15 yards and hoisington will have the football inside great bend territory after the 15 yard markoff you know, it was a nice play by the Cardinals, pass play out of the shotgun, hit Cody in stride, but he hit him he hit him right in the hands. But as soon as Cody caught the football, there was a helmet right in his gut, separated him from the ball, went to the turf, no catch. But uh, the Great Bend players jumped up and kind of hovered over him and must have said something or even that. Uh, motion in of itself right now can, can be considered taunting. That's a point of emphasis in high school football. And off the chance table, he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage and then be gathered down there as making a tackle was Chad Towsley, a six foot three, 191 pound senior, along with Ethan Henderson. No gain on the play for Chance Damon. Obviously, these young men all know each other, so there's probably a little, a lot of talk going on out there. But that was a little excessive, according to the official. Yeah, they don't like uh, any show of you know bravado out there, and that's what I think they saw with them kind of hovering over the down football player. But at any rate. Uh, that time, Great Bend, the play didn't look like the timing was good on that play, but it had to do with the down lineman of Great Bend. I didn't see who it was, but he was in the backfield of the Cardinals off the snap, and when uh, Chance got the ball from Hanslick, there was a Great Bend player right there, so it was a terrific play along the defensive front by the Panthers. Washington will let the play clock run down, call timeout right before it expires, so Washington will take a timeout. 7.47 to play, midway second quarter, no score. Hoisington and Great Bend. We'll be right back. It'll be Hoisington with a second down of nine. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. USD 431 Hoisington Public Schools provides all students an education that supplies necessary skills for lifetime learning and prepares them for their future. Each student will be provided an environment in which they can learn to their full potential. Hoisington Public Schools. Like a good neighbor, Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance has always been there to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Athletics. She's also there to help you with your insurance coverage. Auto, home, health, and life. State Farm is there for you. Kathy Burke, State Farm Insurance, South Main, Hoisington. Flyover Cafe in Sioux Sink has something for everyone in the month of September. With Biker Breakfast Day, September 9th, and Prime Rib that night at 5. Then it's Encore Sound, Saturday, September 22nd. Flyover Cafe supports all Hoisington students and athletics. Back at Elton Brown Field in Hoisington alongside Dr. Blake Harris. I'm Mike Escher, studio engineer this evening, Dwayne Cooper. 2012 season opener, and it's been much more than what maybe I expected. It's a second down and nine for Hoisington. we scoreless midway through the second quarter. Hoisington and Great Bam. Hagen hands like shotgun formation with Avery Urban and Chance Tamo off to either side. Avery takes the snap, comes to the near sideline, tackle from behind as he gets inside the 35-yard line. 
Making the tackle from behind was Ethan Henderson. No, excuse me, that was Chad Towsley. Towsley able to knock Hagen down, but Hagen with a pickup of about five. He's inside the 35 down to the 33. Yeah, it's a heck of a play by Towsley because the Cardinals out of a full house backfield, and I mean that with the hands like in the tailback spot in the gun with two uh, runner uh, on either side of him. They just take off to the right side, and there was a big hole there. He was off to the races, but 42 Towsley from his defensive end spot on the other side came from behind and knocked him down, saving an even bigger play. Third down and five as the clock ticks under seven minutes to play. Second quarter. Hagen Hanslick with Avery Herbert and Chance Damel off to the other side. They'll hand off to Damel. Damel goes to the 30-yard line, spins down to the 28, and the pile still moving forward. We had this instant early, early in the contest, and the officials with a little bit quicker whistle. Boisington Cardinals say it's a first down, but we'll wait for the men in the black and white shirts to signify it's close. It's going to be at the inside the 39, and Hoisington has to get to the 38. So it's going to bring up a big fourth down play here for Hoisington with about a half a yard to go. You know, maybe that is the 5A influence, uh, you know, like a college influence. They wait a long time before they blow the whistles because sometimes a runner will break out of that pack and they don't want to blow it too early as long as... The runners turn these legs and the pile's moving forward. They let it go. That time the Cardinals fourth and short were going for it this time. Well, 6.15 to play. Hagen just takes the snap under center, and he has the first down as he's inside the 38-yard line. And Jason Ingram said they did have a under the center play on for certain specific conditions, and that obviously was it on a fourth down and short. Hagen with a one-yard pickup, good enough for the first down. Hoisington moves the change and keeps the clock a rolling. Yeah, behind uh, uh, Cody Richter off the center spot. He just hesitated a little bit, let Cody turn the guy right in front of him, and he took that crease and got well enough for a first down. Official signifies the clock to roll. First and 10 for Washington. Ball at the 27-yard line of Gray Bend. Deepest penetration by the Cardinals thus far. Now back to Hagen. Hagen makes a man miss, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now lost the football, and Gray Ben going to come away with us. We hadn't talked about turnovers, but there's the first one of the contest as Hagen Hanslick has the ball stripped, and coming up with the pigskin was Great Ben's uh, Chad Townsley. So he made a bigger play. He made a big play a little bit ago, and he comes up with a turnover there as Hagen puts the ball on the turf. Ray Ben has it at their own 30, 28-yard line. Yeah, it's going to be Hans Lake, just a isolation play with him running the football out of the gun to the left side, and he didn't take off right away. He's kind of waiting for the blocking develop, and Townsley, just like he did before, came in from the weak side and, and uh, made Hans Lake take off running for it and caused a fumble. Terrific play that time by number 42, Chad Towsley. Six foot three, 191 pound senior. They fake the handoff to Lopez and Beck spins out of a tackle with this. Belton coming up and Zach Sanders, he's had a couple good hits as Beck spun out of a couple tackles, but Sanders able to finish him off. A gain of a two on the play and Bryce Beck knows he got hit there by Hoisington Cardinal. Yeah, using his speed, Beck was uh, spinning, uh, trying to get away from a tackle and right out of the first spin, uncubs eight. Zach Sanders really lowers the boom on him. Nice tackle. Beck hops right back up, back in the shotgun as it's second and eight from their own 30-yard line. Two receivers split to their sideline, one to the far sideline. Lopez behind Beck. Beck fakes the handoff, rolls out to their sideline, dumps a pass into the flat, and it's going to be dropped out there. Dropping the football was Michael Haynes, so he'll bring up a third down as Great Bend is just one out of four passing, and that pass was completed by Matt Marshall to Bryce Beck, the quarterback. Yeah, that time uh, in the flat pass, about a five-yard pattern. But Trevor Williams and Zach Sanders were in the quarterback f uh, face after he faked into the line of scrimmage, rolled to his right, looked up, and uh, number 55, Williams and Sanders, right in his face, helped cause the misdirection on that pass. Just terrific play, third and eight. 44-45 to play, first, first half, no score. Great Ben and Hoisington, big third down and eight. Back to pass Beck, looking downfield, has a man going well downfield. It's going to be intercepted by Hagen Hanslick. Hagen at the 50-yard line to the 40, looking for some blockers. It's going to be spun down at the 35-yard line. Washington coaches all won the face mask. They're not going to get the call. Blake 
thinking there was a face mask as well. I don't see a flag. So it'll be Washington football, first and 10 at the Great Bend, 36 yard line as Hansley comes up with the INT. In Great Bend territory at the 35 yard line, the Cardinals intercept the ball. Hagen Hanslick running down the field and what everyone was hollering at as Great Bend came in and tackled him with the helmet, grabbed the helmet under the collar and pulled him down. That's a penalty. The officials didn't see it or we had had 15 more yards. But at any rate, Hagen's okay. He's kind of shaking up just a little bit, but we've seen that kid take a lot of a lot of stuff over the last couple of years. He is one tough cookie, and uh, the Cardinals in business after the interception. 4.30 left in the half at the Great Bend 35. So Hagen fumbles on the preceding, uh, preceding possession for Washington and comes right back with the INT. Shotgun formation. Hagen over the middle to Cody Stetler. Cody in the ball for intercepted by the Panthers. Cody had a hand on it with the interception for the Panthers. That's going to be Greg Burley as Stetler got a hand on it. The pass was behind him, and Stetler got a hand on it, and the ball just kind of dropped right into the hands of Greg Burley, and Greg Ben gets the turnover right back. Yeah, pretty exciting football, that play that we tried to run earlier, and I said the ball was kind of underthrown down low. Well, this time it was high for Cody. He was open, but it was way behind him. He tried to reach his left hand back and bring it in, but instead he just tipped it right to the Great Ben defender, and up the sideline he goes. So back-to-back turnovers off interceptions give Great Ben a first and 10 at their own 42. No score. 421 to play second quarter. Hoisington nothing. Great Ben nothing. In the shotgun formation is a Bryce Beck. Beck takes the snap, and we're going to have a flag thrown as it looks like a Panther may have moved too soon and Beck gets to the 45-yard line where he's thrown back there. Avery Ehrman along with Zach Sanders. Sanders playing quite a game from his linebacker position. I'll tell you what, the Cardinal defense, particularly the linebackers, well, really the whole interior, the whole defense really playing the run well and also putting pressure on the quarterback. This defense is showing up strong tonight, stopping this offense a great bend so far in the first half, 407 left, and the score is nothing to nothing. Great Bend gets a penalty on first down. We stopped him on that first down with a short game, but it was really blown dead before the whistle. Well, why wasn't it blown dead? I don't know. I mean, they play. They kept on. They continued the, to play. Yeah. It's first and 15 for Great Bend at their own 37-yard line, moving right to left here at Elton Brown Field in Hoisington. Alinde goes in motion. Beck fakes the handoff now, takes it up the middle, and he's going to be stopped. He gets to the 38-yard line, making the tackle for Hoisington from the linebacker position, Caton Janicek. The six foot, 210 pound senior, a gain of just a couple on the play, is going to bring up a second down and 13. Trevor Williams coming in, boy, he's playing great in the middle. Darren Pullen in the game right now, uh, listed as a sometime starter, so that is part of our depth right there on the defensive line. But second and one, two, three, second and 14, 330 left. The Great Bend Panthers timeout on the field. Great Bend. First timeout by Great Bend. Uh, 328 to play first half. No score. HHS and GBHS, Barton County. Battle going on on this opening night of the 2012 high school football season. You're listening to Washington Cardinal Football on 100.7 Eagle Country. Rotomix has led the industry for over 20 years by building a quality product and continually improving the design. The staggered rotor is specifically designed to meet the challenges of feeding wet or dry distillers grains. Rotomix, frequently copied, never duplicated. What if your teenage son or daughter could make serious headway toward a well-paying career in a field that they are passionate about while they're still in high school? And how about if they would pay no college tuition on dozens of the required technical courses? Interested? Call Barton Community College today. Find out how you can get driven at Barton. Your hometown newspaper, the Hoisington Dispatch, is your source for local news. The Dispatch, along with the Central Kansas Rocket, are pleased to help sponsor this Cardinal broadcast. Find out more about High Neighbor News at midkansasnews.com. It's hot. And there's no wind. <laughs> and that is, man, Mike Hesher's talking, so that's the only wind we have up here. And there's a lot of hot air there, boy. <laughs> Second down and 13. Thank you, Dr. Blake Harris. You're welcome. Start early and start off. <laughs> the 38-yard line. Great bend. After the interception by Greg Burley has it. It's going to be a second down and 13 at their own 38-yard line. They're moving right to left. They'll hand off to Lopez. Lopez has been neutralized thus far. He spins out of a tackle. Of Peyton, of Peyton Bullard gets to the 45-yard line. That'll be a pickup of seven. Lopez able to spin out of the tackle there of Janicek and gets to the 45. 
and they'll bring up a third down, we'll call it seven. You know, the a testament of the Cardinal defense so far tonight, that looked like a long, long run, picked up seven yards. It's only the second run tonight that he's had. It's been over five yards, so the Cardinals have really done a good job on him. Brings up, but that was a nice run, brings up third and six. Lopez, 12, seven. Car Lopez, 12, seven, 12 carries for 51 yards thus far. Third down and long. Poisington defensively has done a good job, obviously, of Marshall back in as the quarterback. He takes a snap, goes right up the middle, has first down yards. He's across the midfield stripe down to the Poisington 47-yard line. Matt Marshall with just his first carry of the evening. has He, he has completed the only pass of the ball game, but he has... A pickup of eight and good enough for a Great Ben first down. Yeah, good play by Great Ben that time. The only times they've had him in at quarterback, they've thrown the ball. This time they run the formation where he's going to throw the ball. He just takes off, off tackle, right up uh, off the right side and picks up first down yardage. Approaching the two-minute mark of the first half, no score, Hoisington and Great Ben. Beck under center, pitches back to Lopez. Lopez with big yardage, going to be dragged down from behind, but inside the 40, close to the 35-yard line. Making the tackle for Hoisington was Peyton Bullard, but Carlos, Carlos, or Josh Lopez, excuse me, with a pickup of 11, first and 10 for Great Ben at the Hoisington 36. They found out something on the line of scrimmage, some kind of scheme or some kind of block as the last two plays through the line of scrimmage for the first time tonight. Uh, they've had big holes to run through as a timeout is called again, 2-10 left in the half. Hoisington calls the timeout, no score, 2-10 to play first half, Hoisington and Great Ben. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Hoisington Rec Center reminds you it's not too late to register for flag football and peewee soccer or co-ed volleyball. Plus, there's still room for the Kansas City Chiefs trip to Arrowhead and the Boot Hill Casino trip on September 19th. Contact the Hoisington Rec Center for further details. This is Missy Fluhoff from Country Place Living, and we are proud to support this local broadcast of Hoisington Sports. At our residence, we provide assisted living and memory care for seniors. At Country Place Living, every effort is made to ensure that you are provided with the very finest and supportive health care. Country Place Living, life as you want it, care as you need it. Banks are the backbone of the communities they serve, and at Wilson State Bank, they are your neighbors and friends. Inquire at WSB about the lowest home mortgage rates we've seen in years. Home ownership is possible at Wilson State Bank, helping to bring you this Cardinal Sports broadcast. An equal housing lender, member FDIC. Well, a surprise thus far from Elton Brownfield and Hoisington on this Friday night of Labor Day weekend. No score, Hoisington and uh, Great Ben as we're in the late stages of the second quarter. You know, the last two plays, they picked up big yardage up the middle for the first time tonight. And what's happened is they've occupied our down linemen and then got in front of our linebackers to fill up the hole. we got to take care of that or they're going to pound it up the middle. First and 10 at the 36-yard line, Lopez. Off the right side, spins outside of the hash marks and gets a pick of about two or three on the play. Haven't been paying attention, but Washington was in a four down line that particular play. I don't know if they made that change during the timeout or not. So they brought one of their linebackers up on that side, and that time A.B. Urban came in from the backside and hit Lopez as he is going through the line of scrimmage, limited into a, a shorter gain. It could have been a big one, but yet he picked up four yards. 125 to play, first half, no score. Great bend inside the Hoisington 35-yard line at the 33, second down and six. Lopez, Lopez bounces out of a tackle, gets to the outside. He's inside the 25-yard line, inside the 20, tripped up on the right side there, making a touchdown-saving tackle for Hoisington. I believe that was uh, number 12. That was Chance Damel from his cornerback position. A big tackle there on Lopez as Lopez was bottled up as he started right up the middle, but was able to use his speed to get to the outside and pick up, we'll call it 12. Yeah, the people on the inside, as we had him bottled up, a big pile in the middle. He just bounced off and took off around the end. A lot of speed uh, by the big guy getting around the end. 65 seconds to play, first half, no score. Great Ben with the deepest penetration. There's tripped up in the backfield as Chance Damon comes up and hits Lopez out of the shins, knocks him down. That's going to be a short pickup of a, just a couple, and Bo Black will utilize his second timeout. We'll take one as well. It'll bring up a first, uh, we'll call it a second and nine for Great Ben when we come back. 56 seconds to play in the first half. No score, Great Ben and Hoisington. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Dr. Blake Harris and staff encourage and support all high school students who participate in extracurricular activities. A positive attitude and teamwork will not only ensure a successful season, but also a long and happy life. Good luck, Cardinals, from the office of Dr. Blake Harris, Hoisington. 
The Hoisington Veterinary Hospital, located just south of Hoisington on Highway 281, wishes the Cardinals the best of luck this season. For large and small animal care, you can count on Dr. Dave McMillan and Dr. Lindsay Mitchell, along with the rest of the staff at Hoisington Veterinary Clinic, your other family doctor. Town & Country Supermarket Hoisington is your locally owned and operated grocery store for more than 50 years. The freshest meat department with excellent beef, pork, and poultry cut and packaged on site, plus a full-service deli. Good luck, Cardinals, from your fans at Town & Country Supermarket. Great bend with a second down and nine from the Hoisington 18-yard line. Moving right to left in the official back official stops play for some reason. I believe both teams have utilized two timeouts. Jason Ingram wanting a explanation from the White Hat. Not sure what he's asking. I only have Great Ben using two timeouts, but that doesn't mean I missed one along the way. 56 seconds to play in the first half. Great Ben with a second down and nine from the Hoisington 18-yard line. Deepest penetration of the game by either team. Bryce Beck under center. The center is Gabe Joyner. High formation. They'll hand off to uh, Josh Lopez. Lopez trying to get out of the tackle of Peyton Bullard. And Bullard hanging on for dear life. Excuse me, that might have been, it was Avery Irvin. Avery Irvin. Finally, some help came, and it stops the play for just a gain of three. It was Lopez was trying to desperately shake the tackle of Irvin. Yeah, it was a terrific play by Irvin. If he hadn't have stopped him, he would have been close to a first down, maybe inside the 10. But as the clock's running, 32 seconds left, great men hurries up, lined up for another play. Third down and six from the 15. They'll fake that, and there's a flag on the play as Beck back to pass, looking deep. It's going to be incomplete. The pass intended out there for the Panthers, Michael Haynes, but a nice job defensively by the Hoisington Cardinals. That was Chance Damel defensively, but the flag flew before the play started. It's against Great Ben. It was thrown in the backfield well, at the quarterback. Maybe holding? I thought it was. We're going to talk about it. If they take the play, it'll be a fourth down. And it's going to be declined, so Great Ben, as the pass is incomplete, that play will stand as Marshall, or excuse me, Beck tried to get it to Michael Haynes, and it'll bring up a fourth down and seven from the 15-yard line. Did you hear what the call was, Michael? I, it was one of these. Yep. yep. I know you listeners out there can't see. I'm trying to explain to Blake as he looks over our handy-dandy referee sheet. 21 seconds to play in the first half. No score. Great Ben with the football at the Hoisington 15-yard line. It's a fourth down and six. And now uh, Bo Black will take his last time out, so we'll take a break as well. 21 seconds to play. First half, Hoisington nothing, Great Ben nothing. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet has been putting Cardinal fans into the driver's seats of brand-new Chevrolets for 84 years. Unlike big city dealerships, you can count on an honest deal at Manweiler's, and they have the factory-certified service department to back up what they sell. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet on Main in Hoisington. Nothing ever stays the same, especially our vision. Eyesight can change dramatically in just one year. That's why the Office of Dr. Tyler Schramer in Hoisington recommends getting your eyesight checked annually so you can enjoy life to the fullest. Call Dr. Tyler Schramer, just south of the Dairy Queen in Hoisington. Jeff and Jenny Zeller support the area youth by sponsoring this Cardinal Sports broadcast. They own JRZ Enterprises, your full-service geological company, on Main in downtown Hoisington. JRZ Enterprises works to provide fuels that drive America, and they're a proud member of the oil and gas industry in Kansas. That was the old illegal shift penalty against the Great Bend Panthers. Declined by Hoisington after the pass from Beck was incomplete as he was trying to get it to Michael Haynes out near the goal line. Nice defensive job there by, I believe, it was Chance Damel. As, as soon as Haynes touched the ball, Chance Damel hit him and knocked the ball loose. I'm not sure if he would have made the catch anyway. It would have been a tough catch, but brings up a fourth down. And seven for Great Ben at the Hoisington 15-yard line. Yeah, Chance broke on the ball that time again. Was in between the quarterback and the receiver. He had to throw it up over Chance. He did get a hand on it, but Chance hit him as soon as he did. As we have 20.3 seconds, the Hoisington crowd standing up for this fourth down play deep in their own territory, trying to keep Great Bend out of the end zone. Cody Stiller urging the crowd off from Hoisington. Big fourth down play here, closing seconds of the first half. They'll fake the handoff to Lopez. 
Beck back to pass, looking to the near sideline. Gets it, pass is complete inside the five-yard line. Down to the three-yard line, the catch made out there by Jonathan Alinde. Alinde able to use his frame and go up and get it. The clock will stop for the timeout, but that's going to for the change for to move the change. But that will be it. It's a first, and they spike the ball. So that'll be a second down and goal to go from there. The ball is at the three-yard line as Beck was able to connect with the Johnson Alinde for a pickup of 12. Yeah, great play by Gray Ben that time. Cardinals had it covered pretty darn well, but Alinde turned over his back shoulder and backpedaled to catch the football in bet- over one Cardinal defender in front of the other. Just a perfect pass. Great adjustment by Alinde to catch the football. It brings up a second and four. They have ball in the three, but it's, I think it's the four, second and four, 11 seconds left. Second and goal from right there, back under center, Mar- Marshall in motion. They'll pitch back to Carlos, to Josh Lopez. Lopez going close to the end zone, and the official on the far side side says, yes, he got in. Trevor Williams there trying to drag Lopez to the turf, but Lopez able to use that strength. He's the 5'8", 215-pound senior, and he was able to use that strength and drag Trevor Williams across the white goal line for the first score of the contest with 5.6 seconds to play first half. Well, they had to earn it, a fourth down pass play, a great pass play, and then a three-yard run as as, uh, Lopez used his strength. He was hit from... uh, the side behind the line of scrimmage but was able to get the nose of the football across. Point after a touchdown attempt is good and Great Ben takes a 7-0 lead with 5.6 seconds to play in the first half. When we come back Great Ben will kick it off. Great Ben with the first score of the game with 7-0 GPHS over Hoisington. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Great Ben feeding ILS Farms and Innovative Livestock Services are pleased to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Sports on KHOK. To the players, parents, coaches, and patrons, all the best this season and in the future from Innovative Livestock Services, ILS Farms, and Great Bend Feeding. It's Gambino's Pizza Day today. Gambino's Pizza of Hoisington says take a break from cooking and dine in with them while enjoying something delicious from their daily buffet. The buffet is available for lunch 11 to 2 and every night 5 to 8. No lunch buffet on Sundays. Gambino's Pizza on Main Street in Hoisington. You're going to love it. Case Court Quest in Hoisington is a proud sponsor of the Cardinals. Stop by for all your auto, truck, agriculture parts, hydraulic fittings, and hoses. And don't forget the full line of Country Clipper lawnmowers. Go Cardinals! Mario Espinoza with the extra point attempt for Great Bend. They are on top 7-0. 5.6 seconds to play in quarter number two as Espinoza has the football teed up at the 40-yard line. He'll kick it right to left. It's a little squib quick, touched by Hoisington Cardinal, and the ball still loose, and there's a scramble for it, and Great Ben says they have it. There's been a couple of turnovers in the contest. There's a scramble at the bottom of the pile, and it looks like Hoisington got the football back. Not sure who was able to get off the pile, but there's 1.7 seconds to go. We'll see what head coach Jason Ingram will do here. Stay with us at halftime. It will be the most played halftime show. We'll talk a little bit about everything as the cross-country meet is in Hoisington tomorrow. Dr. Blake Harris will be up bright and early for that affair. Hoisington, 1.7 seconds to go. Looks like they're going to go to what is called the victory formation as Jacob Durrett will be deep, and Hoisington will just snap it back to Hagen Hanslick, who's underneath the center, Cody Richter, and that's how your first half will come to an end as Hagen now goes under center, takes the pigskin, drops to the knee to the turf, and your first half comes to an end, and what an entertaining first half it was. Great Ben leads Washington by a score of 7 to nothing after 24 minutes, a very entertaining first half. We'll be back to talk a little bit about it after this. You're listening to the Washington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country, KHOK, Hoisington, Great Bend. Suffering with headaches and back pain? There is help. Dr. Chad Beck with Beck Chiropractic is there when you need relief from life's aches and pains. Beck Chiropractic also specializing in sports medicine and proudly supports Cardinal sports. Beck Chiropractic, downtown Hoisington. Cardinal Pharmacy is your locally owned Healthmark Pharmacy and proud supporter of the Hoisington Cardinals. At Healthmark Pharmacy, they take time to get to know you and answer any questions you may have. Caring for you and about you. Cardinal Pharmacy. Go get them, Cardinals. First Kansas Bank, Great Bend, Hoisington, Claflin, member FDIC. Our tradition, we have one mission. First Kansas Bank, we're people you know. 
When you're not performing at the top of your game, Clara Barton Therapy Services can evaluate and design a treatment program that will keep the Cardinal athletes and their supporters in the game. Therapy Services, Clara Barton Hospital and Medical Clinic. USD 431 Hoisington Public Schools provides all students an education that supplies necessary skills for lifetime learning and prepares them for their future. Each student will be provided an environment in which they can learn to their full potential. Hoisington Public Schools. Like a good neighbor, Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance has always been there to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Athletics. She's also there to help you with your insurance coverage. Auto, home, health, and life. State Farm is there for you. Kathy Burt, State Farm Insurance, South Main, Hoisington. Flyover Cafe in Susink has something for everyone in the month of September. With Biker Breakfast Day, September 9th, and Prime Rib that night at 5. Then it's Encore Sound, Saturday, September 22nd. Flyover Cafe supports all Hoisington students and athletics. Rotomix has led the industry for over 20 years by building a quality product and continually improving the design. The staggered rotor is specifically designed to meet the challenges of feeding wet or dry distillers grains. Rotomix, frequently copied, never duplicated. Moe's Place in Beaver is more than a great place to eat. Moe's is always an adventure destination where families and friends gather for some of the finest food you're likely to find anywhere. Meticulously prepared by Leonard Mader and served by wife Linda, You'll feel like family and be treated that way. Great food, reasonable prices, and a getaway that's just a few miles down the road. Best of luck to the Hoisington Cardinals this year and your halftime sponsor, Moe's Place in Beaver. That was a completion on fourth down that gave that gave Great Bend a chance to score the touchdown late in the first half. Great Bend got the football to start the contest to their own 25-yard line, drove inside the Hoisington 20, but lost the ball on downs after Hoisington came up with a nice defensive stand after Great Bend got inside the 20-yard line. Great Bend, Hoisington was forced to punt on their first possession, a three and out. Great Bend forced to punt on their second and third possessions of the contest. And then it kind of turned into a turnover battle as Hagen Hanslick would fumble the football. But Great Bend would give it right back as Hagen Hanslick would come up with an interception of Bryce Beck. And that was the capitalization as and Great Bend was able to capitalize as Greg Burley had the interception that led to the Great Bend touchdown. He picked off a pass of Hagen Hanslick. And that's where we stand. 7 nothing. Great Bend after the first 24 minutes. A little bit of a surprise, I think, for most people here. But it's just a 7 nothing contest after 24 minutes. I say that. I say that's a surprise to most everybody in the stands. I think no surprise to the 34 members of the Hoisington football team, including their staff and coaches. Would you not agree, Blake Harris, if you could hear me? I was talking about how it may be a score, it may be a surprise, 7 nothing to, to, to most of us. I think to the Hoisington players and their coaching staff, but this is no surprise at all. You know, I, I have a feeling you're right. I, I think that they came in a little bit afraid of Great Bend's speed and were worried that they couldn't contain it. Other than that, I felt I think they felt like they matched up pretty good because we do have a lot of starters back from a very good defense with a couple key additions. And the speed didn't hurt us really. Maybe one play, the bounce out play to Lopez here to get down, to give them a, a chance to have that as a fourth down play uh, for a pass play. Just a great catch, a great throw. But uh, I think the Cardinal defense feels pretty good about what they did the first half in spite of that score. And I, I think you're right, except for the speed. 
speed. I, I think they were worried a little bit about the containment on the speed, but they did a heck of a job the whole first half containing that speed, and thus it's seven to nothing, Mike. Halftime score, great band of seven, Hoisey to nothing. We'll be right back with more of your Bose Place halftime show after this. You're listening to the Washington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. What if your teenage son or daughter could make serious headway toward a well-paying career in a field that they are passionate about while they're still in high school? And how about if they would pay no college tuition on dozens of the required technical courses? Interested? Call Barton Community College today. Find out how you can get driven at Barton. Your hometown newspaper, the Hoisington Dispatch, is your source for local news. The Dispatch, along with the Central Kansas Rocket, are pleased to help sponsor this Cardinal broadcast. Find out more about High Neighbor News at midkansasnews.com. Hoisington Rec Center reminds you it's not too late to register for flag football and peewee soccer or co-ed volleyball. Plus, there's still room for the Kansas City Chiefs trip to Arrowhead and the Boot Hill Casino trip on September 19th. Contact the Hoisington Rec Center for further details. This is Missy Fluhoff from Country Place Living, and we are proud to support this local broadcast of Hoisington Sports. At our residence, we provide assisted living and memory care for seniors. At Country Place Living, every effort is made to ensure that you are provided with the very finest and supportive health care. Country Place Living, life as you want it, care as you need it. Banks are the backbone of the communities they serve, and at Wilson State Bank, they are your neighbors and friends. Inquire at WSP about the lowest home mortgage rates we've seen in years. Home ownership is possible at Wilson State Bank, helping to bring you this Cardinal Sports broadcast. An equal housing lender, member FDIC. As a fan, you have a right to enjoy good sportsmanship as well as a responsibility to practice it. Donald E. Reif, Jr., attorney at law, reminds you that at all high school sporting events, the student-athlete is supposed to be the center of attention, not the fan in the stand. Donald E. Reif, Jr., attorney at law, located on Main Street in Hoisington. Dr. Robin Durant, general surgery with Clara Barton Surgical Services in Hoisington, is a proud sponsor of Hoisington Sports. As a member of the community, Dr. Durant supports all activities at Hoisington High School and wishes the Cardinals the best of luck this season. Town & Country Supermarket Hoisington is your locally owned and operated grocery store for more than 50 years. The freshest meat department with excellent beef, pork, and poultry cut and packaged on site, plus a full-service deli. Good luck, Cardinals, from your fans at Town & Country Supermarket. Most place in Beaver was smoke-free long before it was cool. Leonard and Linda Mater moved back to Kansas to run a great little restaurant in Beaver, Kansas. Now it's recognized as one of the top 100 destinations in the state. But don't worry, the food is great and the price is down to earth, just like the owners. You'll always feel at home and you'll never be disappointed. Most place in Beaver, proud to support the Cardinals, and they are your halftime report sponsor right here on KHOK. Alongside Dr. Blake Harris, I'm Mike Kesher. Studio engineer this evening is Dwayne Cooper. Great Ben leads at halftime by a score of 7 to nothing. Halftime show being brought to you by Most Place in Beaver. For great food, a great time, and a smoke-free environment, visit Most Place in Beaver. And as most everybody in Hoisington knows, longtime Hoisington football coach Lonnie Urban passed away over the summer. And Blake Harris, one quick story that you have about Lonnie Urban. Well, Ronnie, you know, obviously one of the most successful coaches the Cardinals have ever had really resurrected this program uh, during his tenure. And I, 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 I hearken back to things you told me about him, too. It's, it's, it was always harder to interview Lonnie after a win than a loss. Uh, Lonnie was always quick to praise whoever he had beaten and, you know, was, uh, didn't like to brag about his win. And, you know, that just kind of bespeaks, you know, the character of Lonnie. And, you know, this town really was behind his football tenure, you know, made uh, Cardinal football exciting again. And everyone, I think I can speak for everyone, will miss him. Yeah, it was, we never quite figured out how he was always, he was actually more talking about for a loss than he was a win. And the story I tell, it is about the double tight, double wing. And I bet it comment on the air one time, we got back to him, and there was three or four weeks there wasn't a lot of conversation between the two of us, so I finally asked him what was going on, he told me, and then he looks at me and he says, by the way, it's not the Rock Creek, it's the double tight, double wing, and I was like, well, Lonnie, I'm sorry, I've always heard Rock Creek, and I never used Rock Creek again, it was always double tight, double wing, and Lonnie, we will miss you, so 
Uh, we'll take a break. Hoisington leads it by, or Hoisington trails Great Bend 7 0 as we're at halftime. Halftime show brought to you by Most Place in Beaver. We'll be right back. You're listening to Washington Cardinal Football on 100.7 Eagle Country. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet has been putting Cardinal fans into the driver's seats of brand new Chevrolets for 84 years. Unlike big city dealerships, you can count on an honest deal at Manweiler's, and they have the factory certified service department to back up what they sell. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet on Main in Hoisington. Nothing ever stays the same, especially our vision. Eyesight can change dramatically in just one year. That's why the office of Dr. Tyler Schramer in Hoisington recommends getting your eyesight checked annually so you can enjoy life to the fullest. Call Dr. Tyler Schramer, just south of the Dairy Queen in Hoisington. Jeff and Jenny Zeller support the area youth by sponsoring this Cardinal Sports broadcast. They own JRZ Enterprises, your full-service geological company, on Main in downtown Hoisington. JRZ Enterprises works to provide fuels that drive America, and they're a proud member of the oil and gas industry in Kansas. Great Bend Feeding, ILS Farms, and Innovative Livestock Services are pleased to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Sports on KHOK. To the players, parents, coaches, and patrons, all the best this season and in the future from Innovative Livestock Services, ILS Farms, and Great Bend Feeding. It's Gambino's Pizza Day today. Gambino's Pizza of Hoisington says take a break from cooking and dine in with them while enjoying something delicious from their daily buffet. The buffet is available for lunch 11 to 2 and every night 5 to 8. No lunch buffet on Sundays. Gambino's Pizza on Main Street in Hoisington. You're going to love it. Case Carquest in Hoist is a proud sponsor of the Cardinals. Stop by for all your auto trucks, agriculture parts, hydraulic fittings, and hoses. And don't forget the full line of grasshopper lawnmowers. Go Cardinals. Suffering with headaches and back pain? There is help. Dr. Chad Beck with Beck Chiropractic is there when you need relief from life's aches and pains. Beck Chiropractic also specializing in sports medicine and proudly supports Cardinal Sports. Beck Chiropractic, downtown Hoisington. Cardinal Pharmacy is your locally owned Healthmark Pharmacy and proud supporter of the Hoisington Cardinals. At Healthmark Pharmacy, they take time to get to know you and answer any questions you may have. Caring for you and about you. Cardinal Pharmacy. Go get them, Cardinals. Here's Paul Snap. For many years, First Kansas Bank has been awarded the highest five-star rating for safety and soundness. Over the years, First Kansas Bank has earned this coveted five-star rating by making high-quality loans and keeping our customers' money safe and sound. Member FDIC. When you're not performing at the top of your game, Clara Barton Therapy Services can evaluate and design a treatment program that will keep the Cardinal athletes and their supporters in the game. Therapy Services, Clara Barton Hospital and Medical Clinic. USC 431 Hoisington Public Schools provides all students an education that supplies necessary skills for lifetime learning and prepares them for their future. Each student will be provided an environment in which they can learn to their full potential. Hoisington Public Schools. Like a good neighbor, Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance has always been there to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Athletics. She's also there to help you with your insurance coverage. Auto, home, health, and life. State Farm is there for you. Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance, South Main, Hoisington. Halftime, the Great Bend Panthers on top by a score of 7 0. The only score came with five seconds to go in the first half as Josh Lopez would score on a four yard touchdown run. Mario Espinoza would kick the extra point to make it 7 0. That four yard touchdown run by Lopez capped a 10 play, 58 yard drive that Great Bend got after a turnover as Chad. Greg Burley, excuse me, Greg Burley picked off a Hagen Hanslick interception, and Great Ben was able to drive 58 yards in 10 plays. The big play was a touch, a pass from the quarterback of Bryce Beck to Jonathan Lindy to cover 13 yards, and that converted on a fourth down play that gave Great Ben first and goal. And then Lopez was able to squeeze over from four yards out, and Great Ben leads it by a score of seven to nothing. Plenty of activities going on in Hoisington this weekend, and it all starts tomorrow morning with the Josh Emerson cross country run. Number numbers kind of limited for cross country as well. Volleyball team played last Tuesday. They're one and one. I believe they're in town on Tuesday or Thursday of this week. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I think it's Tuesday. I think it is Tuesday. They'll play at it's five a quad. It's a quad. I believe it's Larned, Ellenwood, and come on, memory boy. <laughs> I don't think I've heard, oh, okay. so I can't remember what I don't know. <laughs> or maybe I forgot that I knew. That could be, too. I would probably know that more than anything else. Very entertaining first half. Keith to the second half, Blake Harris. I think for Washington, 
I think the fatigue that we talked about maybe showed a little bit on that last drive that Great Bend was able to score. Maybe there were some offensive adjustments as well by the Panthers, but they were able to score. And it was that fourth down conversion as Beck Kid Alinde gave him the first and goal, and then Lopez was able to squeeze over from four yards out. But Great Hoisington playing a whale of a football game. A heck of a football game, and I think they answered their in their own minds whether they their uh, top 11 on can stay out on the field with this deep and talented and fast Great Bend uh, football squad. And uh, you know, I think those questions are answered. There's also another big play on that Lopez that gets stopped in the backfield on a third or fourth and long, and then bounces off the pile and goes around the end to pick up the first down when we had him stopped. But uh, you know that uh, pass play uh, to Alende inside the five-yard line that converted the fourth and 12 was a heck of a play. I mean, the quarterback threw the ball at the only place the receiver could have caught the ball because he was well covered, and the receiver turned over his back shoulder and backpedaled to catch the football between two Cardinals. It was a heck of a play. I think it was well defended. I'm sure uh, the Cardinal coaching staff would have loved to have someone stick a hand up and knock it down, but uh, Great Bend earned everything they got that uh, first First half, the Cardinals could not score the football, but had a couple chances, a couple drives, and Great Ben uh, took advantage of the the two big plays on that last drive. And, and you're right, Mike. Maybe it is a little fatigue factor, and you have the feeling we talked about it before the end of the first half. You, you know, Great Ben might just say, "Okay, well, everyone's been talking about you know how we're going to wear down Hoisington. Let's just run it, this ram it down their throat." and see how long they can hold up with it. So we'll see what the game plan is the second half. You know, are they, is Great Bend going to come out and just try to wear us out? Uh, can the Cardinals move the football? You know, that's another thing. You know, they showed they could move the football in stretches, but uh, we need to have a sustained drive and get some points to stand the football game. Keys to the game uh, brought to you by Manuel Chevrolet and Washington, serving Central Kansas for over eight decades with Chevrolet vehicles, plus the parts, service, and body shop. Visit mchevy.com. That's Manuel or Chevrolet in Hoisington. It's eight no or seven nothing at halftime. Hoisington with just 55 yards of total offense. All of those coming on the ground. Hagen hands like unofficially one out of zero out of four passing. He did throw the one interception. He also did fumble one. He also has a pick of his own. And Great Ben able to score on the four-yard touchdown run by Josh Lopez. It'll be Hoisington football, I believe, to start. Quarter number three, we'll see what adjustments were made at halftime. Pretty important series, I think, coming out here. The second half, of course, it, it always is. But particularly in a game like this, when the Cardinals go down right at the end of the first half and get the ball back to start the second half, you know, this is a critical time in the game for the underdog, particularly and the team behind. Uh, we'll see how the Cardinals come out. Hopefully, you'd like to see them move the football and get some points. But, you know, that defense has been playing so well, you'd like to see them on the sideline at least the unit on the sideline. <laughs> it's the same players, basically, but uh, make Grant Ben go the length of the field at least. Larry Espinosa with a high kickoff. It's going to be short, taken by Cody Richter at the 20-yard line. Cody across the 30-yard line, still scrambling, and he's going to be brought down there at the 30-yard line as Cody Richter came over for quite a ways to get that high kickoff off the foot of Mario Espino, and it's going to be Hoisin football first and 10 at their own 30-yard line to start the third quarter. High kick, a lot of good coverage by Gray Ben one time. It's a short kick, not really deep, but a high kick allows their coverage to get down and surround the football, so the Cardinals end up with a good field position starting out at the 30, and as the officials get the ball set, here we go. Hagen Hanslick in the gun with uh, running backs flanked on either side of him. Avery Urban and Chance Damel. Avery yet to touch the football. He ran well in the soap scrimmage, and Avery will get the football to start it. He spins out of a tackle and then right into another Panther, and Avery maybe got a yard. I think they'll give him credit to the 31-yard line. First carry in the contest for Avery Urban. Bring up a second down and nine for HHS. That whole play was, uh, you know, just destined for no game. But the first of all, the snap was almost over the head of Hanslick, and then he had a hard time getting it into the belly of uh, Urban as he was going to go up the middle. By that time, Great Bend's defensive line linebackers had pinched off the hole. He did good with his own ability to pick up a yard. Quite a crowd here tonight at Elton Brown Field as Labor Day weekend starts in Hoisington. Big parade on Monday. Second down to nine. Hagen hands like shotgun formation. Jacob Red goes in motion. Now we'll slow down and there's a low snap but Hagen handles it. He follows Avery Urban around the right side. He spun down 
As he gets to the 34-yard line, that'll be a pickup of three for Hagen Hanslick. Give Hagen eight carries for 47 yards. Important play, third and long, third and almost six yards. That time, direct goes in motion from the right side. Uh, down the line of scrimmage, gets to the left side of the... Uh, the deep back, Hagen Hanslick, and we go to the right away from uh, the motion that time. Great Ben read the play. He did well to pick up those three yards. Officials timeout. I believe we have a little equipment problem for the Great Ben Panthers. One of their cornerbacks gets some help. That's Bryce Hoffmeister. Now we're ready to go as the official sets the ball in play. Third down. We'll call it six from the uh, Hoisington 34-yard line. Moving left to right here in the third, third, third quarter. Hagen hands like over the middle looking for Avery Urban and the pass is incomplete. Goes to the field turf and it's gonna be bring up a fourth down for HHS as Avery Urban and Hagen hands like unable to connect on that pass play. Yeah, uh, something happened well after the whistle that time that no official saw uh, something that's hurt great band earlier in the game, a couple unsportsmanlike contact after the ball was passing on the turf, uh, Avery Irvin got knocked to the ground from behind after the whistle. No one saw it. That could have been a big penalty in the favor of the Cardinals. But at any rate, Great Ben holds on that first first series of the second half. Now it's up to the Cardinal defense again. Hagan hands like in puff formation. He'll do the rugby style kick. This time he's going to take it. He has the hole. He has first down yardage. He's across the 45. He's going to be belted right there. And uh, that's Chad Towsley, the Great Ben with or Hoisington. With that play, they've done it several times. They do the rugby style kick, and you mentioned in the first half, Lakers, if he sees a hole, he takes it, and it was wide open that time. As they say, you could have drove a truck through it, and Hagen hands up with a first down yardage, pointing to, to the to their own 45-yard line. And that's the advantage of having that young man punt the football on, out of the rugby style. Just like Mike said, we talked about it in the first half. He saw a huge hole, and he took off. Big play for the Cardinals. First down on a fourth and punt play gives us first down at the 45. They intend to play. They fake the hand off the chance. Daniel Hagen rolls out to the left side, throws across his body. Ball tipped, and it's caught down there by Avery Urban. Urban breaks the tackle. <laughs> He's inside the 10. He's going to score a touchdown. Oh my gosh, tip play by the Cardinals. It wasn't planned, but the Cardinals, Hagen Hanslick throw, tries to throw to uh, big Cody Stetler. It was tipped right in front of Stetler. The ball goes up right into Avery Irvine's hands at about the 27-yard line. A big block at the 10. I didn't see who hit it, but the Cardinals take the tip play in for a six as the Cardinals tie the football game. I, after the extra point, we will tie the football game. Getting a little ahead of myself. That's a 50 five-yard touchdown pass, taking hands leg to uh, Avery Urban, and as you mentioned, that was a beautiful tip play by Avery Urban. The ball was up there, and he caught it, and he just had one man to beat, and he was able to outrun him to the end zone for the touchdown. Hagen Hanslick will hold for Cody Stetler. The snap is good, and the kick is no good. Just short and to the right, so Great Ben holds on to a 7-6 to six advantage, but a 55-yard touchdown pass from Hagen Hanslick to Avery Urban after Hoisington converts on the fourth down a long fake punt. They're able to convert on the next play, and with 6 10 one to play third quarter, Great Bend 7, Washington 6. You listen to Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Flyover Cafe in Sioux Sink has something for everyone in the month of September with Biker Breakfast Day September 9th and Prime Rib that night at 5. Then it's Encore Sound Saturday, September 22nd. Flyover Cafe supports all Hoisington students and athletics. Rotomix has led the industry for over 20 years by building a quality product and continually improving the design. The staggered rotor is specifically designed to meet the challenges of feeding wet or dry distiller screens. Rotomix, frequently copied, never duplicated. What if your teenage son or daughter could make serious headway toward a well-paying career in a field that they are passionate about while they're still in high school? And how about if they would pay no college tuition on dozens of the required technical courses? Interested? Call Barton Community College today. Find out how you can get driven at Barton. Washington goes five yards in, uh, or goes 70 yards in five plays, and the point after attempt is no good. It's 7-6 straight band. It's Cody Steller. High end over end kick. It's going to bounce the 25-yard line. Goes right to Bryce Hoffmeister. Hoffmeister outside the numbers. is dragging the Cardinal across the 35-yard line down to the 38-yard line. There for Washington. That was Jacob Warkin, the freshman. He was hanging on for dear life. 
as Hoffmeister drives, drags him across the 35 out to the 38-yard line. That's where Great Bend will start this possession, first and 10 at their own 38-yard line, their first possession of the second half. Yeah, it couldn't have started any better for the Cardinals. Kind of a flu play, but we'll take it. A tip play that tipped by a defender right into the arms of a streaking Avery Urban, not the intended receiver, goes 55 yards on the tip pass play, and the Cardinals pull within one seven to six. Great Bend's first possession of the second half. This defense that played so well in the first half has to step up again. Up front for the Panthers. Warren Bayless, Kelsel, Westoff, and Joyner as a snap back to Fleischbeck. He hands off. I believe that's to Lopez. And Lopez battling, battling, but the flock of Cardinals there drag Chaz, Josh Lopez to the turf. Excuse me, that was not Lopez running with the football that time. That was Michael Haynes, his first carry. A little misdirection play, a little different wrinkle. Uh, you know, they've been power football, a little different setup, too, kind of like the Cardinals setup. Back in the middle, two running backs. Uh, they look like they're going to the right. They give it back to the left. Haynes, kind of a crossback play. Cardinals read it all the way. Nice play, Seth Owens on the line of scrimmage. Uh, Cody Stetler crashing down, stopped him for no gain. Second down, eight from their own 40 yard line. They'll hand off to Lopez. Lopez up the middle between the tackles. He's dropped right there as he gets about a yard gain on the play, getting up off the bottom of the pile for Hoisington was Kate and Janicek. That'll bring up a third down and seven after the one-yard pickup by Josh Lopez. Lopez unofficially 18 carries, 86 yards. Got Darren pulling at the bottom of that pile. Janicek up high, pulling down low. Really stopped the legs of the big uh, tailback, allowing Janicek to come over and knock him over. So two Cardinals on that play stopped the big fullback, tailback up the middle. Third down, uh, eight to go. The ball at the 41-yard line for Great Bend. They move it right to left here, or west to east at Elton Brownfield and Hoisington. Back, back to pass. Here comes the blitz. It's setting up a screen. It's a bubble screen, and the, the catch is made and streaks it into the secondary. The Panthers with the catch is going to be brought down about the 33-yard line. Nice play there by the Great Bend Panthers as Mitch Johnson with the completion. A big gain of about 25 yards. We'll get it officially, but first and ten for Great Bend at the Hoisington. 32 yard line. Yeah, terrific play set up. Just like you draw it on paper, the Cardinals in pursuit. You, as soon as you saw three Cardinals rushing towards the quarterback uh, un, untouched, you look downfield and that wide receiver coming across. No one really there. No one saw it. Terrific blocking and the Cardinals really went for the fake. Uh, perfect drawn up, perfect executed. First down, great bend. Gain of 17 on the play. First and 10 for the Panthers at the Washington 32 yard line. Hand off to Lopez and Lopez met as he gets to the line of scrimmage. First to hit him for the Washington Cardinals was Cody Richter, and Josh Lopez has been stopped. Now we have here. a penalty. There is a flag on the play. It was against us. And the back the official said it's going to be against Washington, and that'll be the, just the second penalty against Washington. Great Ben was whistled for five in the first half. They were able to throttle Josh Lopez at the line of scrimmage, but as the officials talk about it, now they'll come over and tell us. That's going to be unsportsmanlike contest, unsportsmanlike conduct against Washington. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. Too bad, uh, great play. Cody Richter really met the play right at the line of scrimmage, picked up a leg of the big fullback and just uh, stopped him right there. But at, at this uh, point in the drive, this part of the field, a huge penalty uh, takes it down from no gain on the play to first and 10 inside the Cardinal 20 at the 17. 7.58 to play third quarter. Great Bend seven, Washington six, as we play midway third quarter. Bryce back under center. Josh Lopez in the backfield, has his Matt Marshall, they'll fake the pitch, back back to pass, looking downfield, has plenty of time, now looks to scramble, he moves off to the right side, cuts outside the numbers, being chased by three or four Cardinals, and he's going to be hit out there about the 10-yard line, going to be a pickup of about five for Bryce Beck, but you mentioned Beck having speed in the pregame show, Blake Harrison, he showed it right there with a pickup of five off the scramble by Bryce Beck. Yeah, a, a great speed to get outside, and I tell you what, Nolan McCurry saved a touchdown because it looked like Beck was going to get around the corner as he was going he got five yards beyond the line of scrimmage and was trying to get around the corner Nolan McCurry came in and as Beck was getting around the last defender uh, McCurry came in and took his legs out took him out of bounds a terrific uh, touchdown saving play really by Nolan McCurry substitute infraction against the Panthers as they had a boy come on late 
That'll be their sixth penalty of the evening. Good for a 50 yards. It'll be a five-yard markup. It'll bring up a second down and 11 will call the ball pushed back outside the 15 to the 17. So negate that play by Becca off the scramble, off the pass play. It's like he didn't gain any. Second down, Great Ben's been hurt by the penalty tonight, and that was no exception. Matt Marshall in the backfield. Now he pitch back comes to Alinde. Alinde going to be dragged down from behind. Coming up to make the tackle for Washington was Chance Dable as Alinde gets very little on the play. Maybe a yard as he's able to fall forward to the... 16, they'll bring up a third down, and we'll call it nine. I'll tell you what, Trevor Williams and Clayton, Kaden Janicek on that left side, as he gave Alindy the ball to go off tackle, there's nowhere to go, and he was dancing around trying to find a crease, allowed Chance Damel to come around the end from behind and grab his ankles and pull him down. Just terrific left side defense by the Cardinals on that play. Lauren at 20, Ellsworth 13 at halftime, so the Indians battling Tyler Hampton tonight, former Washington basketball coach, now coach football. Back to pass. Smash Marshall looking downfield. Falling to the top and making an interception. Wow, what a play. The penalty is on the play afterwards as uh, he's down and uh, I don't know who they're going to call this against, but the ball underthrown. McCurry on his back catches the ball and then Great Ben jumps on him and high school football you're down. No penalty but uh, we'll see what happens as the Cardinals are kind of uh, no one knows what the penalty is right now, but uh, Great Ben jumped on the player as he was on his back after the interception, and we'll see how the officials sort this one out. Noah McCurry, Noah McCurry making that interception, backpedaling and falling to the turf. Uh, uh, personal foul against Great Ben, and that's uh, that's what it was for. Uh, the Great Ben, no, I don't fault Great Ben, but they should know the rules. You don't jump on a player when he's on the ground. Uh, and a great interception by McCurry, ball underthrown, and it gives the Cardinals out of the hole instead of intercepting it and being on the two, they're out on the 18-yard line. The Cardinals come up with a big interception to thwart Great Bend in their first uh, possession of the second half. Cardinals get the ball back on their own 18-yard line. 6.50 to play, third quarter, Great Bend seven, Washington six. Cardinals with the football at their own 18-yard line after the Nolan McCurry interception. Second interception thrown by Bryce Beck. That was actually Matt Marshall who threw that one, I believe, as that was an INT. So Matt Marshall with interception. Second interception thrown by the Panthers tonight. Hagen hands like under center. Will hand off the chance. Damel Damel spins out of a tackle and follows forward to the 20-yard line. That'll be a pickup of a couple for a chance. Damel, chance unofficially, six carries, 13 yards. Behind Avery Urban running up the middle. Uh, goes off the block to the inside. Great Ben, you know, interior line and linebackers collapsed on the play. A little spin move right at the end allowed Damel to pick up. Uh, about two yards, so it brings up second and eight. Seth Owen into the contest for Hoisington, playing a left tackle position. As the center, Cody Richter, looking back to Cody, to Hagen Hanslick, who's in the shotgun formation. Second down and eight from Hoisington's own 20-yard line, 7-6, great bend. Now back to Hagen, looking for yardage. Cuts outside of the hash marks and gets close to the 25. I think they'll mark forward progress stopped at the 23, so gave Hagen a three-yard gain, 10 carries, 61 yards for Hagen Hanslick. As Washington now, Blake Harris will shorten, try to shorten the game because they have a chance to win it. It's only 7 6, 5.45 to play third quarter. Yeah, uh, stop that uh, big drive we stopped against Gray Bend right now, and it's a big third down play. Something we see we like when we set our wide receiver that time, Jacob Durant, we've run the play before. Set him in motion to the left side, we run to the side, he vacates. And that time, Great Bend was able to stop it for a short game. Brings up third and five. Big third down play here for the Cardinals. Moving left to right. Fake the handoff. Now Hagen rolls out to the near sideline. Looking downfield for Avery Urban, who's open. Avery makes the catch at the 40. Lost the football. And it's going to be recovered by the Great Bend Panthers. Avery made the catch. And there's a flag. And that one might go against Hoisington. I'm not sure. Coming up with the football for Hoisington was Ethan Henderson. Avery had the catch, was backpedaling, was hit from behind. I didn't catch who made the hit, but Ethan Henderson comes up with the recovery for the Panthers. I believe Great Ben will have the football first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Nice pass play completion from Hanslick to Urban, but Avery coughs 
up the football. Yeah, it was a heck of a belt after he caught the football. He's able, he caught it looking back towards the quarterback, turned around, took a step, and got hit right on the numbers, dropped the football. Great Bend recovers personal foul against Great Bend again as they, and he was ejected from the football game. Uh, I don't know what number it was, but they just had someone thrown out of the football game. Uh, great Bend after the big play by their defense, a great play by the Cardinals on the pass play, a completed pass play down the seam from Hanslick to Urban. He gets belted, the ball knocks loose. Great Bend goes crazy over there, and a personal foul called. Official comes to the press box and, and gives the thumb out. So maybe that's one of the kids that has been called more than once tonight, but uh, uh, have an ejection, ejection on the play. And we don't know what number it is, but the, that hurts Great Ben because they they have uh, back in Cardinal territory after the fumble recovery on the big hit gives them first and 10 at their own 40. It's 514 to play in the third quarter. Hoisington trailing Great Ben by a single point, 7-6. Cody Stella unable to kick the point after after Hoisington touchdown and scrambling late into the contest with a Great Ben offensive lineman. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Under center is Bryce Beck. Back to pass, now he hands off to Josh Lopez, who spun around and brought to the turf a great defensive play by the Hoisington Cardinals. Coming in was Caton Janicek. That's a loss of about five, as they've really put the clamp on the Josh Lopez here in the second half. Well, you know, he, he does have a straightaway speed, but if he doesn't get started going upfield, the Cardinals seem to be able to contain him in the tackles and going wide. So, a uh, great play on first down by the Cardinal defense, second and 15 after the five-yard loss. Great tackle by Janicek to bring him down. What a job by the Cardinal coaching staff. Zach Baird, defensive coordinator, along with Jason Ingram, the head coach, Matt Kelch, Kyle Haxton, along with... Tim Woodcock, hand off to Lopez. He's belted right behind the line of scrimmage for another loss on the play. Can't see who's getting up off the t bottom of the pile, but that was a solo tackle by a Cardinal who is not getting up at the present time. I think he got a cramp, and Jason Ingram was a little worried about the cramps in the contest with his heat. I That's believe Zach Sanders. Zach Sanders came in. That was another loss. That was a loss of about two on the play. So Josh Lopez here has three carries in the second half. I have them for minus five yards. Yeah, and that, uh, that's what they're doing indeed. It looks like uh, it is a cramp on the, the calf muscle, you know, that kind of a collision with a 220-pounder. You know, on your 150, you'll worry about it, but it's a cramp. Time out on the field, 413 to play, third quarter. Great Bend 7, Hoisington 6. You're listening to HHS Football on 100.7 Eagle Country. Your hometown newspaper, the Hoisington Dispatch, is your source for local news. The Dispatch, along with the Central Kansas Rocket, are pleased to help sponsor this Cardinal broadcast. Find out more about High Neighbor News at midkansasnews.com. Hoisington Rec Center reminds you it's not too late to register for flag football and peewee soccer or co-ed volleyball. Plus, there's still room for the Kansas City Chiefs trip to Arrowhead and the Boot Hill Casino trip on September 19th. Contact the Hoisington Rec Center for further details. This is Missy Fluhoff from Country Place Living, and we are proud to support this local broadcast of Hoisington Sports. At our residence, we provide assisted living and memory care for seniors. At Country Place Living, every effort is made to ensure that you are provided with the very finest and supportive health care. Country Place Living, life as you want it, care as you need it. A big third down and 17 for the Great Bend Panthers. They're backed up to their 33-yard line. Matt Marsh, Matt Marshall will be the quarterback. He's in the shotgun formation. Takes the handoff, looking downfield, has a man. It's going to be incomplete, and the flag comes in. As making the defensive play for Hoisington was no one McCurry, but I believe they're going to get him for the left hand. The, his behind hand. Is that automatic first down? That's an automatic first down. That's too bad because the pass play was only about a four-yard pattern. Good coverage going over the right shoulder, but I couldn't see it. The official over there called contact. He had his hand on the back, I believe. Good call by the official. As you mentioned, it was a short out in the flat, but the 15-yard markup gives the Panthers an automatic first down. That's just the third penalty of the evening against Hoisington, but two of them have been for 15 yards, and that one hurts because more than likely it would have forced a punting situation for the Panthers. Yeah, and that's good coverage by McCurry. Just came through the receiver just enough to draw the flag on a short pattern. It needed a lot of yards, but any rate, first down. 4 to play. Now back to Matt Marshall right up the middle of the field. Marshall inside the uh, 
45-yard line down to about the 42-yard line. That's going to be good enough for a 10-yard pickup on a first down as Matt Marshall running hard. Just took it right up the middle of the field between the, the hash marks and has a, well, they're going to look at it. I believe they're going to measure here as Matt Marshall. And when Matt Marshall comes in, it's a good play call by Great Ben. There's been a lot of pass plays with him. He takes a takes the snap, uh, puts the ball up in a passing position, takes a step back, and then just tucks it and runs right up the middle. It's a nice play by a Great Bend offense that time. Big hole right up the middle as they measure. They're a little bit short, so it brings a, a second and inches uh, as they get the big conversion on the pass interference penalty in the flat to come up, and now it's second short into Cardinal territory. And by my untrained eye, Great Bend looks a little more explosive than Matt Marshall, the quarterback. Yeah, they do. Uh, you know, they put Beck out on the uh, out on the wing. He stays in the football game, and he's caught a big pass in the first half. It kind of opens up their offense a little bit. Givens, a uh, talented receiver, and Marshall, we wondered how come he didn't play more offense, and they're showing right now the wrinkle with him in the game. Second down, one, ball at the Hoisington 42-yard line. Marshall in the shotgun formation, has a lone set back. He'll just take the ball and run forward, and he has first down yardage inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line. That's a three-yard pickup for Matt Marshall, and it'll be first and 10 for Great Ben at the... Uh, Poisoning to their market right out the 40-yard line as Matt Marshall. He's a stout young man, not very big. He's 5'10", but he's 221 pounds, and he is a competitor. And he's athletic. He has some speed, explosiveness. Get him out on the field with Beck, and that just adds another component to this offense. And right now, 337 left in the third. Cardinals down one, 7-6. This is, again, like we've called so many times, an important defensive series for the Cardinals. Gabe Joyner leads the Panthers to the line of scrimmage. Means Justin are traveling in white uniforms moving right to left here in the third quarter. Marshall, a quick out. They go to Josh Lopez. Lopez with a catch, and he's inside the 35-yard line, close to the 34. Just a quick out to Lopez, who makes the grab. Falls forward for a gain of six. Bring up a second down and four. I think that was uh, Tristan Hall, Mike. Is he in the game? Oh, I believe you're right. No, Michael Haynes, 32. It was 32. That was Michael Haynes. My apologies. That was a pickup of six. A nice play, just toss it out uh, to him in the flat, uh, right down the line of scrimmage, and use his ability and speed to pick up five yards. Back, back at quarter, back under center. They'll hand off to Josh Lopez. Lopez dancing, makes a couple people miss. He has the first down, or is close to the first down marker at the 30-yard line. Josh Lopez. Gain of, we'll call it five, and it's going to be just short of a first down, I believe. It's going to be third down, as there is an injured Cardinal on the play. I think it's Zach Sanders again down. He's not cramping up this time. Timeout on the field as Dr. Robin Durrett, Jason Ingram, and the yeah, other pulling his leg yes, again. Uh, yeah, they are down. He's oh, that's Hagen Hanslick. Hagen, if you remember, was a game against Cedric or Medicine Lodge last year where he just was camping up the whole contest and he, every other play. Every other play. Now Zach Sanders is down to the our left and he's being stretched out by Cody Steller. It's going to bring it by third down and one when we come back to action. I think they're taking a water break. We'll just go ahead and keep it here. Entertaining ball game. 2.58 to play third quarter. Great band with a touchdown late in the first half. A four-yard touchdown run by Josh Lopez. PAT was good. 7-0. Washington would come back and score on a 55-yard touchdown pass from Hagen Hanslick to Avery Urban on the tip play. Urban would score. The PAT would be good, and that would be missed by Cody Steller, and that's the difference in the contest right now. 7-6, great bend. Yeah, current drive at Great Bend, uh, 258 left in the third, like Mike said, uh, really aided by a uh, pass interference call out on the flat on third and long. The pass play in the flat is only about a four-yard pattern our, our player made a break on the ball, went through the defender, caught him a little too much, like Mike said, a hand on the back, gave them a first down. When, by all rights, it probably would have been a punt. Automatic first down. That's the drive we're seeing right now. Tire eye formation for the Panthers. Beck will hand off to Lopez. Lopez has first down yard. He tries to skip to the outside, but he's going to be dragged down from behind. He saw... He saw daylight to the right side down the field, but the Panther, or the Hoisins and Cardinals able to draw, drag him down from behind. But it is good enough for a first down again, a two for Josh Lopez. Now unofficially, 22 carries, 86 yards. 
Yeah, inside, uh, you know, our 30-yard line right now, Great Bend on the drive, this Cardinal defense. Now you start to think about the fatigue factor, et cetera, uh, going into the football game as the Cardinal defense has been out there a long time and uh, has fought valiantly uh, right now, critical time of the game. Hand hey, back to Lopez. Lopez belted as he got to the line of scrimmage. Uh, that time, number 53, Peyton Bowler. From his linebacker position, Washington Cardinal coaches very enthusiastic about their linebacking core as well as the safeties. And the whole defense has played very well tonight. Give credit to Seth Owens starting his first game at the nose tackle position. Yeah, nose tackle, and he's played a heck of a game. Darren Pullen's come in and made some big plays that time. Peyton Bowler stood the big fullback up behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Brings up second and 11. Ball at the Hoisington 30-yard line. Great Ben moving it from right to left. As they'll go shotgun formation. Bryce Beck in the contest. Josh Lopez will be the deep back. And Michael Haynes also in the ball game. Beck will do a little delay to Lopez. And Lopez inside of the 30 down to the 25-yard line. A pick of about five for Josh Lopez. As Bo Black and the Panther offense now grinding things out with Josh Lopez. Gain of five, bring up a third down, and we'll call it seven. Nice play, not a straight handoff as a statue, you know, kind of a draw play where the quarterback right where he is in the gun stands up like he's looking downfield. The running back right beside him off of the snap takes the ball and goes right up the middle. Nice draw play, great band, picks up important yards, brings up third and six, maybe seven. Big play here at the Washington 25-yard line for the Panthers. Beck back to pass, has it out in the flat, ball is going to be cut and running toward the end zone and be knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Making the catch, that was Mitch Johnson. That's his second catch of the evening as he catches a little flare in the left flat, and it's good enough for a great band first down, and they're close to a goal-to-go -go situation. They're going to mark out 11, so it will not be a first and goal. It will be first and 10 from the Hoisington 11. Yeah, that was a nice play by Gray Band. It was a perfect timing play as they had the inside of the defense screened off. The uh, player who caught the ball running towards the sideline gets the ball in rhythm in stride. First and 10 for Great Bend at the Washington 11. Pitch back to Lopez. Lopez, Cody Steller comes in from his end position along with Kate and Janicek and also Peyton Bullard. It's going to be a pickup of about one to the 10-yard line. They'll bring up a second down and nine from there. Yeah, big play. Cody Stetler coming to crashing down the line of scrimmage from his defensive end spot. Uh, they pick up one yard, but they've had to earn their yards up the middle. They've had some nice pass plays a couple times, as evidenced by the last one. It's a second and almost goal to goal from the 11. 35 seconds played third quarter. Great Bend seven, Washington six. Bryce Beck under center. Matt Marshall comes in motion to the near sideline. They'll hand off to Lopez. He'll follow Marshall. He's belted right there, stands up, and then is able to fall forward for a couple, three yards. Cannot see who made the initial hit by the Hoisington Cardinals, but they stood up the big 215-pound senior. But Lopez kept the news, knees a churning and fell forward for a gain of two. Darren Poland, Seth Owens in the interior, Clayton Janicek and Peyton Bullard all there for that play. Uh, held him to short yardage again, coming to a big third down play. They have to get, they can't, they can get a first down. Uh, before a touchdown as that ends the third quarter. Third quarter comes to an end. Great Ben 7, Hoisington 6. We'll be back with the final 12 minutes after this. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Banks are the backbone of the communities they serve. And at Wilson State Bank, they are your neighbors and friends. Inquire at WSP about the lowest home mortgage rates we've seen in years. Home ownership is possible at Wilson State Bank, helping to bring you this Cardinal Sports broadcast. An equal housing lender, member FDIC. Dr. Blake Harris and staff encourage and support all high school students who participate in extracurricular activities. A positive attitude and teamwork will not only ensure a successful season, but also a long and happy life. Good luck, Cardinals, from the office of Dr. Blake Harris, Hoisington. The Hoisington Veterinary Hospital, located just south of Hoisington on Highway 281, wishes the Cardinals the best of luck this season. For large and small animal care, you can count on Dr. Dave McMillan and Dr. Lindsay Mitchell, along with the rest of the staff at Hoisington Veterinary Clinic your other family doctor. We were scoreless after the first quarter. Great Ben scored with five seconds to play before intermission to take a 7-0 lead. Washington scored at the 10-01 mark of the third quarter. A touchdown pass from Hagen Hanslick to Avery Urban. The PAT was missed, and that's where we stand with Great Ben on top of HHS by a score of 7-6. Great Ben has a third and a six from the seven-yard line inside Washington territory. 
Fourth quarter starting. The Cardinals still in this football game. Great Ben driving, you know, aided by a couple of penalties on this drive and a couple of big third down conversions, which they ran to perfection right now face a th another third down conversion. But the difference being is they're inside the Cardinal 10 yard line, uh, third and uh, maybe six to go for a first down. The first down marker inside the one right at the goal line. So another big, obviously, two down territory here for Great Bend. I don't think they kick field goals. Oh, I'm sure Mario Espinoza, Espino is pretty good, so we'll see what they do. we got to get there first. Third down and six from the seven. Matt Marshall is your quarterback with three receivers split out to the far sideline, and Bryce Beck split out as a lone receiver to the near sideline. Marshall will take the snap head right up the middle behind the offensive line. He's inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. That'll be a pickup of four for Matt Marshall. Give him about 20 yards on five carries thus far, but it's going to bring him four down as the great bend is short, and Bo Black seems to want to go for it here as Matt Kelch, Jason Ingram, and Zach Baird trying to encourage the crowd and the players as well. Here we go, fourth down and about two from the four-yard line. Bryce Beck will be under center just starting the fourth quarter. Great bend on top of Washington 7-6. Beck barking out signals. Marshall goes in motion to hand off to Lopez. Lopez finds the creep. And it's in the end zone for the Great Bend touchdown. Power right back, three backs right behind him. He gives to the tailback, over guard. And you can tell they score a touchdown. And right now, you can tell, you know, Great Bend's in a football game as evidenced by the reaction from the crowd on the other side. They, you know, touchdowns have been few and far between. Right now, they go up seven points. Important first down kick, I mean, extra point kick right now to get Great Bend to eight-point uh, lead right now in the fourth quarter. Nice job by that offensive line. Nick Warren, Wyatt Bayless, Cody Helsel, Lucas Westoff, and Gabe Joner. Gabe, uh, the big senior running back, Josh Lopez, just up a crease off the left side to score the touchdown. Back will hold. The kick by Espino is up, and it's it not in the rim. It was a twirling kick, but it goes between the uprights good. And Great Ben takes a 14 to 6 lead with 11 17 to play in the ball game. We'll be back with the GPHS kickoff after this. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Town & Country Supermarket Hoisington is your locally owned and operated grocery store for more than 50 years. The freshest meat department with excellent beef, pork, and poultry cut and packaged on site, plus a full-service deli. Good luck, Cardinals, from your fans at Town & Country Supermarket. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet has been putting Cardinal fans into the driver's seats of brand new Chevrolets for 84 years. Unlike big city dealerships, you can count on an honest deal at Manweiler's, and they have the factory certified service department to back up what they sell. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet on Main in Hoisington. Nothing ever stays the same, especially our vision. Eyesight can change dramatically in just one year. That's why the office of Dr. Tyler Schramer in Hoisington recommends getting your eyesight checked annually so you can enjoy life to the fullest. Call Dr. Tyler Schramer, just south of the Dairy Queen. In Hoisington. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country, KHOK, Hoisington, Great Bend. Alongside Dr. Blake Harris, uh, Mike Kester, studio engineer this evening, Dwayne Cooper, as we approach the 9 o'clock hour. Great Bend able to eat several minutes off the clock and score a three yard touchdown run by Josh Lopez, his second of the evening. And Great Bend leads at 14 to 6. High end over end kick. Going to be taken by the Hoisington Cardinals, Noah McCurry. He hands off to a Brandon Ball, and Ball spins out across the 20-yard line to about the 22-yard line. That's where Hoisington will start this possession, first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Is Brandon Ball, the Hoisington wrestler of that either one state or he won state. He won I could state. not remember state, the first wrestling state champion for Hoisington in several years. Yeah, as a sophomore. As a sophomore. Yeah, a heck of a year by Ball. To, to, to do that, yeah. he's what not, an accomplishment. He's not very big, only 130 pounds, but he's a tough young man, obviously. You know, really important time in the football game right now for the Hoisington Cardinals, you know, down eight points now in the fourth quarter. Defense has been on the field a long time. Uh, the offense, you know, the same kids, but we need to get some excitement going on offense, get some first downs, eat up some clock, and there is something we didn't need to do, a penalty right off the bat, uh, legal procedure. Five-yard penalty against Hoisington. We'll give them uh, Hoisington now five penalties for 40 yards on the evening. Great Bend has been whistled seven times for 65 yards. 
pushes the ball back to the 17-yard uh, line. Hoisington with a first down and 17. Just starting the fourth quarter, Hoisington on top by score, or Great Bend on top by score of 14 to 6. Deep in your own territory, a, you know, unforced error, so to speak, a legal procedure before the snap of the ball. Hurts the Cardinals right now, first and 15, inside their own 20 as we now do another big mistake. The snap goes right through the hands of Hagen Hanslick. He picks it up at the goal line, is able to fight him. Well, yeah, get right out of a tackle at the five, and then it's tripped up at the seven-yard line. A nice tackle there by the Great Bend Panthers, Greg Burley, as Hagen was able to spin out of a tackle at the five after picking up the football at the goal line. And if he would have broke that tackle, it may have been a foot race, but Burley able to get him by the shoestrings, and Hoytington now will, there is a flag on the play on the other side going to talk things over. Hoisington will be well back after the five-yard penalty. It's a legal procedure against Hoisington. So does that negate that whole play? They're going to decline the penalty, obviously, if they can choose to, which it sounds like they did. I didn't. I thought a legal procedure is dead ball foul. But I thought so, too, but they're not going to do that. So it's a loss of 11 on the play, but it could have been a lot more disastrous there for Hoisington. And it's like it's second down and bowling alley right now <laughs> for the Cardinals and not what we wanted to see on this drive. Really critical drive right now. And the Cardinals are, have misfired on both of their first two uh, downs in the possession. And Hoisington has to take a timeout now as there's Cody Stetler is not on the field, and there was not the Hoisington backup tight end was not on the field. So when we come back, Hoisington will face a second down and a lot. You're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Jeff and Jenny Zeller support the area youth by sponsoring this Cardinal sports broadcast. They own JRZ Enterprises, your full-service geological company on Main in downtown Hoisington. JRZ Enterprises works to provide fuels that drive America, and they're a proud member of the oil and gas industry in Kansas. Great Bend Feeding, ILS Farms, and Innovative Livestock Services are pleased to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Sports on KHOK. To the players, parents, coaches, and patrons, all the best this season and in the future from Innovative Livestock Services, ILS Farms, and Great Bend Feeding. It's Gambino's Pizza Day today. Gambino's Pizza of Hoisington says take a break from cooking and dine in with them while enjoying something delicious from their daily buffet. The buffet is available for lunch 11 to 2 and every night 5 to 8. No lunch buffet on Sundays. Gambino's Pizza on Main Street in Hoisington. You're going to love it. Back to action. Hoisington at their own 8-yard line. Hagen hands like shotgun formation. 10-34 to play in the ballgame. 8-14 to uh, 6. Great Bend with the leader. The pass in the flat to Chan Samuel who makes the catch. He's going to be wrestled to the ground at the 10-yard line. Nice defensive play over there on the far sideline by the Panthers right at the far hash marks. As Hagen Hanslick able to connect with Chan Samuel with very little pickup on the play. Good for about two yards because they'll bring up a third down and a lot for Washington. It was a nice uh, attempt at a screen play that time, and, and we got all but one player blocked over there. Number 26, Chris Burley, the, the senior cornerback with a lot of speed, was able to fight around the block. We get him blocked. We had a, it was a big play, but because of him, he uh, great play on the corner. Burley was able to bring the Cardinal uh, receiver down for no gain. It's third down and still bowling alley for the Cardinals. <laughs> Why not the Dairy Queen or the whole grocery store? Oh, it could be. Let's go. Let's go. The, you got to alternate there. Yeah, we do. Okay. We do. Okay. <laughs> and now Hoisington will take a second time out in a row as there's been a little bit of confusion on this drive for the Hoisington Cardinals as Cody Stetler is having an injury looked at and they had to take a time out because Hoisington only had 10 players on the field. Now this time before a big third down and... 22, Washington will call their second timeout. It's 14-6, Great Bend. You're listening to the Washington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Case Card Quest in Washington is a proud sponsor of the Cardinals. Stop by for all your auto, truck, agriculture parts, hydraulic fittings, and hoses. And don't forget the full line of Country Clipper lawnmowers. Go Cardinals. Suffering with headaches and back pain? There is help. Dr. Chad Beck with Beck Chiropractic is there when you need relief from life's aches and pains. Beck Chiropractic also specializing in sports medicine and proudly supports Cardinal Sports. Beck Chiropractic, downtown Hoisington. Cardinal Pharmacy is your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy and proud supporter of the Hoisington Cardinals. At Health Mart Pharmacy, they take time to get to know you and answer any questions you may have. Caring for you and about you. Cardinal Pharmacy. Go get them, Cardinals. Well, 
by Dr. Blake Harris. I'm Mike Escher sitting with you this evening is uh, Dwayne Cooper. Hoisting with third down and 22. The ball at their own 10-yard line. Hagen hands like shotgun formation. Can't stand with a lone setback. Hagen looking downfield. Now he's going to be rushed. Almost falls to the turf. He's able to scramble out and then going to be dropped as he gets back to the line of scrimmage as the Panthers, Ethan Henderson, along with... Big number 92, and that's the young man we talked about in the pregame show, Jason Brock. He was able to drag him down from behind, so Hoisington faces a fourth down and 22. That'll bring on the punt team. A pass play design, a pass play called that time. Hagen kind of uh, fluttered, sidestepped to his left, looking downfield. And the time that he looked downfield, the very first time we had a receiver open, but boy, it closed quickly as uh, backside Purdue from the great pursuit from the Great Bend defense came. He saw him coming and had to tuck the ball and run. Uh, you know, one, a timing play, you just hard to let go of it. Hagen this time will just put it away. Not rugby style. High end over end kick. It's going to be taken by Uselton to lock the football. And that's the second time tonight that the young man, uh, Trent Uselton, has had trouble on a punt. Hoisington down there to cover it, but Great Ben falls on it. I believe Brandon Ball down there first for Hoisington. But Uselton uh, able to fall on it right after he muffed it. So it'll be Great Ben first and 10 at the Hoisington 46 yard line. Yeah, here we go again. The Cardinal defense on the field after at least there was a lot of timeouts and breaks to uh, give the kids a chance to rest. But great field position for a great band as their defense really played well on the last series, holding the Cardinals to negative yards. A great band at their own 49-yard line to start the drive. By my count, Hoisington was only five yards on the ground in the second half. Looks like Matt Marshall will be the quarterback this time as split out to the near side line. We flash back and we have an illegal motion call against the Panthers. That'll push Great Bend back across their 50-yard line. That is their eighth penalty for 70 yards. Sure, Bo Black will not be happy with that stat from this evening. At this point, he just wants to come away with a win. And yeah, no doubt. And the Card Cardinals want to keep it close, and we'd love to get one more score on the board. Uh, give us new life, give us some new energy, but right now our defense with their back against the wall, a nice penalty for the Cardinals anyway. Michael Haynes next to Marshall. Marshall throws a quick pass out to Josh Lopez who makes the catch, and Lopez inside the Washington 45-yard line down to the 43-yard line. Nice look from Matt Marshall to uh, Josh Lopez who makes the catch, and it's going to be a pickup of about seven. The ball at the Washington 43-yard line will be second down and eight. I'll tell you what, a huge play also uh, on the block out there. Someone coming back as a Cardinal defender thought he had a clear shot to the receiver. But I don't know where he came from, but yeah, a blindside block to spring him free. 8-10 to play in the ball game. Great bit on top by a score of 14-6. Bryce Beck will hand off to Josh Lopez. Lopez met at the line of scrimmage. Falls maybe lost a yard on the play as that front five of Washington. Trevor Williams along with Seth Owen. Also, Darren Poland in there, and the linebackers of Urban, Janice, and Peyton Board playing a whale of a game tonight. That time, uh, Trevor Williams and Seth Owens kind of clogged up the play, allowing Peyton Bowler to come streaking in and, and take out the legs of the big fullback before he got the line of scrimmage as there was a loss on the play. Third down and eight after the one-yard loss by Josh Lopez. High formation for the Panthers. Receiver split out to the far sideline. They'll pitch back to Lopez. High pitch to Lopez, able to bring it down. He cuts up with the hash marks. He's close to the 40-yard line. Made a man miss at the Hoisington 45-yard line and picked up four more yards. And Great Ben faces a fourth down and five from the Hoisington 41. You know, at this stage in the game, the uh, way the car, uh, uh, Panther defense is them playing, it's at the 41, 702 left, uh, fourth and long. You have a feeling Great Ben's going to go for it and trust their defense because it's still a long field for the Cardinals, uh, you know, even if they don't make it. So the Cardinal defense would surely like to stop this fourth down play, at least give the offense back on the field, keep points off the board from Great Ben. Washington's biggest play of the game was a tip pass as Hagen Hanslick connected with Avery Urban as Cody Stetler tipped it to Urban and that scored the touchdown. That went for 55 yards. Marshall back to pass, being pressured on the blitz by Chance Samuel. Ball loose, and it's going to be picked up by the Hoisington Cardinals. It was an incomplete pass is what they're saying. It was a forward pass. It looked like the ball shot out of 
there. That was kind of a shovel, it was a shovel pass. It was a shovel pass, and that's why it looked like it shot out of there. It was incomplete, almost intercepted by a Hoisington Cardinal. But Hoisington will take over on down with 6.27 to play in the ball game. Hoisington trails Great Bend 14 to 6. What a play by the Cardinal defense. I don't know who was streaking. That one Chance Damel. Chance Damel had more speed than Marshall trying to get wide, and he had to get rid of the ball, so he just shoveled it forward. A forward pass as long as it goes forward, and uh, the Cardinal defense able to bring him down with the ball falling to the turf and Cardinal first and 10 at their own 41. Great field position, keeps Great Bend out of the end zone, gives our offense some life. We'll take a quick break, 6.26 to play in the game. Great Bend 14, Hoisington 6, you're listening to Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. First Kansas Bank, Great Bend, Hoisington, Claflin, member FDIC. Our tradition, we have one mission. First Kansas Bank. We're people you know. When you're not performing at the top of your game, Clara Barton Therapy Services can evaluate and design a treatment program that will keep the Cardinal athletes and their supporters in the game. Therapy Services, Clara Barton Hospital and Medical Clinic. USC 431 Hoisington Public Schools provides all students an education that supplies necessary skills for lifetime learning and prepares them for their future. Each student will be provided an environment in which they can learn to their full potential. Hoisington Public Schools. Hoisington has the football throw on 41-yard line, 14 to 6. Middle stages of the fourth quarter. Great Bend on top by eight. Hagen hands like looking, looking now. Tucks the ball and runs right up the middle field. Breaks through an arm tackle. Is across the 50-yard line. Runs over Ethan Henderson and is knocked back. What a hit by the Great Bend Panthers coming up to make the stop. That was Brock Ibera. But Hagen hands like close to the first down marker. They're going to mark him out the 50-yard line. It's going to be short of about one yard. It's going to be a nine-yard pickup for Hagen Hanslick. And you know, as we've seen uh, for the last year at least, you don't uh, arm tackle Hagen Hanslick. He run. He has the ability to run through that arm tackle, and unless you shoulder him up, uh, he might run over you. But that time, two great Ben Panthers at the end of that run kept him from getting the first down. The big yardage on first down, nine yards, as Hagen looks like he's sorry to fall over, but he's calling the snaps as here we go. Cody Richter snaps it back to Hagen. Hagen takes the grounder and just moves right up the middle of the field on the left hash mark. Is across the midfield stripe into Great Bend territory. Pick up a three. That'll be good enough for Washington first down. Now 14 carries, 62 yards, and I learned something over the week. Blake Harris, this fish, this field is technically incorrect because because. The Cardinal covers up the white stripe at the midfield stripe, and technically the stripe is supposed to go all the way through. So in case, there could be some spot problems. There, there could be some spot problems. Everybody's problem, everybody in the state has the same problem, but I did not know that. So You know, Hagen Hansley looks like he's about ready to fall over so much and so that the official came up after that last play and said, son, are you okay? And Hagen said, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. That's just Hagen. 5.15 to play, a box handoff. Now Hagen just has to keep it. He's to the 45-yard line, going to be dragged down there. Hagen looked like he was ready to hand it off, but there was nobody to hand it off to, so he just moves forward for a gain of four, second down and six. Under five minutes to play now in the ballgame. Great bit on top of Washington, 14 to six. Hagen Hanslick is out of energy right now. It's too bad we can't call a timeout after every other play because he needs some rest. He's played every down of this game, as I think so, on offense and defense, both as a lot of the Cardinals have. And more than you think of Great Ben has done the same thing because they've had to to get this hard fought right now lead 14 to 6. Second down, we'll call it seven about the 45 yard line to hand off the chance. Damel Chayam trying to get to the outside, trying to outrun a couple of Great Bend defenders, unable to do so as Chad Towsley, the six foot three, 191 pound senior on the defensive side, able to chase down Chance Damel. A gain of about one on the play. Oh, no gain on the play. We'll call it third down and seven. You know, and we've talked about the fatigue factor in this game. Well, right now, you know, we don't have any many plays that don't originate with uh, uh, Hagen Hanslick, and right now he's had having a hard time even uh, re-snapping his chin strap out there. He is really tired, and uh, that time we tried to uh, give it, go outside to uh, Damel around the end. Great Ben had the play covered well, 
Uh, third down and eight. Cody Stetler back in the contest. He'll split out to the far sideline. Two receivers split to either side with Hagen Hanslick and Chance Stable in the backfield. Third down and eight from the 45-yard line. Hagen looking to pass, throws in the flat. The ball is caught, is dropped by Jeffrey Kaiser. And there's a flag on the play coming in from way from behind. Not sure who that's going to be. That was from the back judge who was way downfield. Pass was incomplete. It would be a fourth down play for Washington. As if that's a call against Great Man, it would be a tough call. We'll see what the call is. Can't they, be interference. Cause they're unless they called piling on or... The officials talk about it. The one thing it does is give Hagen like <laughs> a chance to breathe. Yeah. 3.51 to play. They're going to say oh, pass my. interference against the Great Bend Panthers. And it please. must have been on the break back towards the ball because it did not happen at the point of the pass. It happened when he broke towards the ball, back towards the football. There's contact, and the ball was in the air, so that's why the official called it. Uh, kind of a tough call against Gray Bend right there. It didn't seem to affect the play, but you cannot uh, interfere with the with the receiver's pattern on a pass play like that. I didn't see it, but well, the now official. That I, now that I think about it, Jeffrey Kaiser was stumbling. Yeah, maybe he was. That's why maybe he was pushed. I, you know, I'm not going to. Big penalty for the Cardinals right now. You Huge know, play in the contest. Yeah, Gray Bend's had a few advantageous calls on their drives also. The Cardinals will take it for sure. 3.51 to play in the ball game. Great Bend 14. Hoisington 6, Great Bend at the Hoisington 30-yard, or Hoisington at the Great Bend 30-yard line. Hands like a quick out, and it's caught up, uh, skipped into Brandon Ball as Hagen was being pressured by the Panthers. Coming in, putting the pressure on Hagen. Hanslick was Great Bend, as that is uh, Justin Henry, a 194-pound uh, junior. Hagen had to get rid of it. Pass incomplete brings up a second down and 10. I'll tell you what, Mike, 347 left in this football game, and the Cardinals down 14 to 6. You know, we have a drive going second and 10. We're at the Great Bend 30-yard line. Our, uh, it's kind of a, a spit and sputter drive we haven't, but we are moving the football. Uh, Interesting time of the game right now. Washington trails Great Bend by eight. Hagen hands like splits. Chance Damon out to the left side. They have four receivers split to the left side, one to the far side on an empty backfield. Ball rolls back to Hagen hands like he'll go downfield for Cody Stiller, throwing it up for Cody, and it's overthrown, goes out of bounds, incomplete. Defensively Cody's down. Defensively back deep for the Panthers. As he was battling the six foot eight Cody Stiller. That's a good play called. Everyone flooded to the left side. Hagen looks to the left side, and then immediately there's the play called thro uh, throws to Cody down the sideline. Just too much, even for 6'8", Cody Settler, a little too far over his head. If the ball would have been down about a foot and a half, two foot, Cody could have come down with it on the sideline. Anyway, it, it stops the clock right now, uh, third and ten. Chris Burley back defensively for the Panthers. Ball out the old Great Bend, 30-yard line. Washington moving on right to left, dressed in their travel the home red uniform. Big play here at third and ten. Hagen Hansleg gets the snap. He'll just run right up the middle of the field, drags the uh, Great Bend defender down to the 25-yard line, tried to spin out of that tackle defensively for Great Bend on the play. That was, once again, Justin Henry playing from his defensive end position, a six foot one, 194-pound junior, bringing about fourth and five after the five-yard pickup by Hagen Hansley. A nice pickup on that third down, makes it fourth and manageable. The Cardinals, of course, going for it. Clock's running 315, left in the football game. Cardinals down only by eight points. Uh, third, fourth down at the 25. Both sides up. Great Bend along the far sideline. Washington on the near sideline and on the end zone. The place is full tonight and it's turned into quite a game. And Jason Ingram will call his last timeout as he realizes what a big play this is with 2.59 to play in the ball game. Washington with a fourth and five, trailing by eight, 14 6. We'll be back to talk about it. You're listening to the Washington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Like a good neighbor, Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance has always been there to help sponsor Washington Cardinal Athletics. She's also there to help you with your insurance coverage. Auto, home, health, and life. State Farm is there for you. Kathy Bird State Farm Insurance, South Main, Washington. Flyover Cafe in Sioux Sink has something for everyone in the month of September with Biker Breakfast Day September 9th and Prime Rib that night at 5. Then it's Encore Sound Saturday, September 22nd. Flyover Cafe supports all Hoisington students and athletics. Roto Mix has led the industry for over 20 years by building a quality product and continually improving the design. The staggered rotor is specifically designed to meet the challenges of feeding wet or dry distillers grains. Roto Mix, frequently copied, never duplicated. <laughs> 
Well, it has, has been an entertaining football contest to start the 2012 season. A lot of people, myself included, didn't think this would be much of a contest, but I have been proven wrong by a gutsy effort by the Washington Cardinals. They trail Gray Ben 14-6 with 2.59 to play in the game. And the Cardinals have the football, albeit it's a fourth and five or a long five, maybe six yards at the Great Bend 25-yard line. So a big play right up here. You know, the game's still in doubt, Mike. You convert this play, and it puts a lot of pressure on Great Bend. Hagan Hanslet gets the snap, back to pass, dropping back. He looks, now he's going to roll to his left. He's going to tuck and run. He has lots of yards. He's going to be drugged down from behind. That is by number 40. The speed of yes. Chad Casley yes. has been a huge difference in this contest. He has run down several Cardinals from behind this evening. Chad Casley, 6'3", 191-pound senior, playing a great band, great game for the Panthers, and that faces a turnover on downs. It'll be great band football at their own 20 at the at their own 27 yard line i think that play was almost called you know get outside and then take off and it looked like there was a lot of green ahead of him but uh, townsley had more speed from behind than hagen hanswick could muster going around the end and that play right there stopped our drive 250 left great band gets it over on downs a long way to go your cardinal defense is pretty proud out there game might be slipping out of reach but we want to keep them out of the end zone let's see what the Offense for the Panthers do here in the last 250. First and 10 at their own 27 yard line. Full house high formation. Marshall goes in motion. Left hand off to Josh Lopez. And Lopez across the 30 yard line falls to the 32 yard line. That'll be a pickup of five. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of Josh Lopez here in the final 250. By my count, that is his 29th carry of the contest, and he goes over 100 yards with 102. Yeah, he's had to earn every one of those. Uh, you'd have to say we've contained him for the most part, a few kind of broken plays that he's able to pick up big yards. But one thing you have to worry about right now, okay, so everyone thinks they're just going to pound it up the middle, pull it out, and, and, you know, try to get a big play to get some points on the board. I wouldn't be surprised. So the Cardinal defense has to be aware. Second down six. We'll call it after the four-yard after the four yard pickup. And off to Lopez. Lopez off the left side, skipping through runners, and his fouls across the 35 to the 36 yard line gonna be a couple yards short of a first down but the big fullback from uh, the Panthers the tailback actually Josh Lopez kind of sifting through tacklers and he picked up four and great bands looks like they're in no hurry to get plays running they're uh, gonna be content it looks like to let this clock run down at 143 left in the football game the Cardinals down by eight points great bend up with 14 two touchdowns in the game the Cardinals Defense on the field, Great Bend offense plugging up the middle with the big fullback, Lopez. And I believe Washington has got a timeout, so they can't stop the clock. Huge play here. Could be the ball game. Third down, we'll call it a long three, a short four from the 36-yard line. And the back judge throws a flag, and it's going to be a delay of game as Bryce Beck didn't pick up the back judge counting down the play clock. So the five-yard infraction will give Great Bend unofficially 10 uh, penalties in the game for 90 yards. Back him up five yards, and I'm not sure if Bo Black really cares at this point about the five-yard markoff. It brings up a third down, and we'll call it now seven. As Jacob Dredd trying to inspire the Hoysington crowd, a big stop here by the Cardinals. They have maybe one last chance here if they can get a stop. Third down and seven. Hoysington really needs a turnover with Chad, with Bryce Beck under center. Beck, barking out signals, takes the snap, pitches back to Lopez. Lopez, right up between of the tackles, is out close to the 34-yard line. We'll call it the 33 as they mark it back a yard. So that will be the 31, 31st carry by my count by Josh Lopez, and it's gonna bring up a fourth down. Hoisington can't stop the clock, and it rolls under one minute to play in the game. Yeah, can't stop the clock. Uh, they have to run one more play, and they could run a, well, if they run a victory formation, the, the clock would stop. Yes, they would. And give us one chance. They're going to let it count down and then probably punt the football away, I'm guessing. That would be a prudent thing to do. Well, I've never been known to be prudent. But <laughs> now they go into the back judge, counts down the final five. Bo Black standing right next to the side official calls his first time out of the second half. And now we'll see what Bo decides to do as it's a fourth down. Six to go. The ball at the uh, Great Bend 33-yard line will go ahead and keep it here, Blake Harris. Entertaining football game. I think most everybody here may be a little surprised that it's basically a one-possession ball game. 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, we've been talking about this all summer long, about the many factors of playing a big school with speed and talent and size, numbers. And what it comes down to is, like a lot of people say, yeah, you have to put 11 on the field. And the 11 we put on the field, even though we were running out of gas, particularly Hagen Hanslick at the end because he was involved in every play, uh, can stand up to Great Ben's first 11, you know, and, and that's an impressive for our kids out there on the football field. Great Ben, uh, you know, earned this victory tonight. There's no doubt they earned the victory. They they will probably win the football game, but uh, the Hoyas and Cardinals have a lot to be proud of and a lot to build on for the rest of the season. Back in part formation, the punt is away. It's a high, short kick. As everybody saying, stay away. It takes a nice, great bend roll there, and Hoisington will get the football. They're going to mark it out about the 40-yard line. So Hoisington has the football back with 28 seconds to go and 60 yards to cover if they want to have a chance at a two-point conversion. And stranger things have happened. Their, their, their touchdown was not... If you had got started at the start of all the talk about this football game and say Cardinals down eight points, 28 seconds left, have the football, no one would be unhappy. And uh, right now, that's where we stand. The Cardinals have the football with a long ways to go. I it. would have asked whether you've been drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just pretty impressive. This is very impressive, by the way. The Cardinals will go to lacrosse next week. That won't be an easy no, challenge won't. as the 2-1-A state runner-ups lacrosse have lost a lot due to graduation, but we still have 28 seconds to go here. Boisington at their own 40-yard line. Hagen hands like shotgun formation, two receivers split to the near side, one to the far. Hagen back to pass, has plenty of time now, tucks it and tries to stiff arm a man at the 42-yard line, falls forward to the 44, a gain of four. But with Hoisington with no timeout, they're going to have to hurry back to the line of scrimmage and spike the football. It's a gain of four for Hagen Hanslick. I have him unofficially 18 carries, 72 yards. Cody Richter snaps the back, the ball's loose, and now Hagen Hanslick has to pick it up and run. I don't think he could have spiked it, and oh. right there is Chad Townsley, and I believe that will finish the game as the clock runs out, and the great Ben Panthers win the contest by a score of 14 to 6, but they know they have been in a football game as Washington helping ha Hagen Hanslick up as Hagen once again... A all max effort tonight by the Hoisington senior, but the Great Bend Panthers come away with a victory tonight, 14 to 6, but they know they have been in a football game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this whole crowd, I think, is in stunned disbelief by what we've seen tonight. Uh, Great Bend uh, won the football game. They made the plays when they had to. The Cardinals had a chance a few times. Some penalties hurt them. Uh, gave Great Bend a big chance on a drive, and they converted. But, uh, you know, uh, this rivalry all of a sudden is a true rivalry because the uh, Great Bend Panthers came over here, beat the Cardinals, but it was a heck of a football game. Congratulations to them. You know, you have to admire Great Bend. They really had nothing to win by doing this. You know, anything that came, they came over and do, people are going to criticize. And the Cardinals came away with a moral victory, if you can call it that. And Great Bend came over here and lived up to uh, their size and their status and, and beat us on our home field. So congratulations to the Panthers and congratulations to the Cardinals. Now, of course, we have some Great Bend Panther students coming to the Washington side and now a couple of the Great Bend administrators will flush them out of the way as everybody in the Washington side was a little worried about this happening, but it seems that the Great Bend officials did a nice job of taking care of matters, and then <laughs> and, and, uh, there might be some Great Bend students in trouble come Monday morning as well. The <laughs> Washington crowd didn't tackle them. <laughs> they ran through this, you know, 20 deep on the sideline over there. That took some guts. Final score, Great Bend 14, Washington 6. We'll be right back and start your post-game show that's being brought to you by Miriam Wilborn. You're listening to the Washington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. What if your teenage son or daughter could make serious headway toward a well-paying career in a field that they are passionate about while they're still in high school? And how about if they would pay no college tuition on dozens of the required technical courses? Interested? Call Barton Community College today. Find out how you can get driven at Barton. Your hometown newspaper, the Hoisington Dispatch, is your source for local news. The Dispatch, along with the Central Kansas Rocket, are pleased to help sponsor this Cardinal broadcast. Find out more about High Neighbor News at midkansasnews.com. 
Hoisington Rec Center reminds you it's not too late to register for flag football and peewee soccer or co-ed volleyball. Plus, there's still room for the Kansas City Chiefs trip to Arrowhead and the Boot Hill Casino trip on September 19th. Contact the Hoisington Rec Center for further details. This is Missy Fluhoff from Country Place Living, and we are proud to support this local broadcast of Hoisington Sports. At our residence, we provide assisted living and memory care for seniors. At Country Place Living, every effort is made to ensure that you are provided with the very finest and supportive health care. Country Place Living, life as you want it, care as you need it. Banks are the backbone of the communities they serve, and at Wilson State Bank, they are your neighbors and friends. Inquire at WSP about the lowest home mortgage rates we've seen in years. Home ownership is possible at Wilson State Bank, helping to bring you this Cardinal Sports broadcast. An equal housing lender, member. FDIC. As a fan, you have a right to enjoy good sportsmanship as well as a responsibility to practice it. Donald E. Reif, Jr., attorney at law, reminds you that at all high school sporting events, the student athlete is supposed to be the center of attention, not the fan in the stand. Donald E. Reif, Jr., attorney at law, located on Main Street in Hoisington. Miriam Wilborn with Keller Real Estate is a proud sponsor of the Hoisington Cardinals. With over 25 years of experience in real estate, Miriam knows what it takes to help you sell your home and find your next dream home. To see your listings, go to KellerAgency.com. And when you're in the market for a home, give Miriam Wilborn with Keller Real Estate a call at 620-786-2167. Miriam Wilborn with Keller Real Estate, proud to sponsor the Hoisington Post Game Show. Welcome back to Elder Brown Field in Washington, alongside Dr. Blake Harris, Tom Mike Escher, who is here this evening has been DeWitt and Ben, Dwayne Cooper, and Ray Ben wins it by a score of 14 to 6. So Blake Harris is actually closer than that, if you can believe that, because it was a very well-played football game. Washington's defense showed why the Washington coaching staff believes in them as they put up quite a battle tonight against the 5A Panthers. A great band earned this victory tonight. They didn't back into it or play their second or JV team. Uh, they came came away with the win, and they had to fight hard for it. So congratulations uh, to them. Uh, they learned a lot about their team. The Cardinals learned a lot about our team tonight. That you know we can play with them, and I, I really do think that towards the end of the game we talked about. Uh, the fatigue factor and I really think the fatigue factor did hurt us because you know our our everything Mr. Everything Hagen Hansley who had every snap of the ball in his hands he was running out of gas towards the end of the play he didn't come out of the game but we even had an official go up and ask him if he was okay uh, when he was having trouble snapping the helmet on his uh, snapping his helmet back on but uh, you know I think Hagen got real tired and of course he would I mean that was uh it was a heck of a football game. Uh, both teams played hard. Both teams were benefited uh, by the other team's miscues, particularly on penalties. Great Ben's uh, last touchdown drive benefited greatly by a couple penalties, legitimate calls. I mean, I'm not saying we didn't commit the penalties, but it uh, gave Great Ben's drive new life, and they were able, after a, a terrific catch and play down at the goal line on a fourth and uh, 12, I think, or fourth and 13, uh, I bear, I think it was, caught the... Uh, Alinde caught the Alinde, pass. Alinde caught the pass uh, from uh, Bryce Beck. A perfect over-the-back shoulder uh, throw, and he adjusted to the ball, caught it running backwards as he adjusted the ball, got the first down, and they were able to convert for the winning touchdown, really. And uh, so you have to give them a lot of credit, and I give the Hoisington Cardinals a lot of credit. They're the teams that we knew, the kids on the defense... Uh, that we knew would play well did, but we saw some new kids make contributions. Uh, Zach Sanders, Seth Owens, Nolan Darren, McCurry. Darren Poland and Nolan Darren McCurry, Poland. the ones I wrote down, yes. It's just terrific play, and the Cardinals, I thought, just showed up really well tonight, and, you know, nothing to, you know, not, you hate moral victories, but this was a moral victory. I think the Cardinals felt like they could win the game, Mike. It just didn't, wasn't, wasn't to happen tonight. Post game show brought to you by Marion Wilborn, your killer real estate agent in Hoisington, sharing her knowledge of the latest market trends, whether it's buying or selling properties. Marion Wilborn is your killer real estate agent in Hoisington. We'll be right back and talk about it with the head coach of the Hoisington Cardinals, Jason Ingram. After this, you're listening to the Hoisington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. Dr. Robin Durant, General Surgery with Clara Barton Surgical Services in Hoisington is a proud sponsor of Hoisington Sports. As a member of the community, Dr. Durant supports all activities at Hoisington High School and wishes the Cardinals the best of luck this season. Town & Country Supermarket Hoisington is your locally owned and operated grocery store for more than 50 years. The freshest meat department with excellent beef, pork, and poultry cut and packaged on site, plus a full-service deli. Good luck, Cardinals, from your fans at Town & Country Supermarket. 
Historic Manweiler Chevrolet has been putting Cardinal fans into the driver's seats of brand new Chevrolets for 84 years. Unlike big city dealerships, you can count on an honest deal at Manweiler's, and they have the factory certified service department to back up what they sell. Historic Manweiler Chevrolet on Main in Hoisington. Nothing ever stays the same, especially our vision. Eyesight can change dramatically in just one year. That's why the office of Dr. Tyler Schramer in Hoisington recommends getting your eyesight checked annually so you can enjoy life to the fullest. Call Dr. Tyler Schramer, just south of the Dairy Queen in Hoisington. Jeff and Jenny Zeller support the area youth by sponsoring this Cardinal Sports broadcast. They own JRZ Enterprises, your full-service geological company, on Main in downtown Hoisington. JRZ Enterprises works to provide fuels that drive America, and they're a proud member of the oil and gas industry in Kansas. Right Bend Feeding, ILS Farms, and Innovative Livestock Services are pleased to help sponsor Hoisington Cardinal Sports on KHOK. To the players, parents, coaches, and patrons, all the best this season and in the future from Innovative Livestock Services, ILS Farms, and Great Bend Feeding. Miriam Wilborn with Keller Real Estate is a proud sponsor of the Hoisington Cardinals. With over 25 years of experience in real estate, Miriam knows what it takes to help you sell your home and find your next dream home. To see your listings, go to KellerAgency.com. And when you're in the market for a home, give Miriam Wilborn with Keller Real Estate a call at 620-786-2167. Miriam Wilborn with Keller Real Estate, proud to sponsor the Hoisington Post Game Show. Welcome back to Elton Brown Field in Hoisington, where the uh, Great Bend Panthers pull out a hard-fought 14-6 win over the Hoisington Cardinals. Joining us now on the pre-game, the post-game show that's sponsored by Mary Milborn, is the head coach of the Hoisington Cardinals, Jason Ingram. And coach, honestly, I'll have to say there was about 40 people who thought Hoisington <laughs> could give them a game, the 35 on the roster and the five coaching staff, and you guys gave Great Bend everything they wanted and more. Oh, and, and if we could have just held out a little longer, a couple little things here and there, and, and uh, can control the ball a little better, and I, I think would be great, but we're excited about where we were and, and the effort these kids put out. I mean, that's what I talked about all the time, is our effort will be matched with no one. There's no question about that. Some players we knew that Kate Janicek, Peyton Bullard will all have great games, Avery Irvin, but there's a couple names that I wrote down that really stepped up. Zach Sanders had a great game defensively. Yeah, come up and belted great bit yes. a couple times. Nolan McCurry with a big interception. Yeah, on the ground, yes. <laughs> really going backwards and falling to the turf. Seth Owen played a nice game, as did Darren Poland. Uh, we're uh, again, we're very pleased with the ones that are stepping up to uh, to help us out here, and it's it's just an amazing feeling to know that these kids are bought in and they're just giving us 100% for the coaching staff, and the coaching staff is working their butt, their booty off to uh, to do what we need to do to be successful, and we're just looking forward to a great season. I, I'm very glad that for the most part we came out of here pretty healthy. I mean, it was just cramps here and there, which we expected playing a team that uh, goes just one way, and, and we're going both ways. So it was very well fought game, and I got to give a lot of credit to their team. Their defense did a wonderful job against us. I mean, they, they hit just as hard as we did, so it was just a well-hit, well-played game. Yeah, the key to their defense, I thought, was the speed of Chad Towsley. He was able, to, he was able to make some tackles from behind mm -hmm. that I don't think the Hoisington kids were ready for. Right, and we tried to do a little thing, uh, look, a couple things different in the second half to kind of control him, and, and he just had a lot of speed coming off the edge, and then I, I tell you what, their linebacking core comes up and pounds real quick. We had a hard time running some of our ISO stuff because they did a very, very good job. They're fundamentally sound, and, and we knew that going in, that, that Great Bend's going to be fundamentally sound. I mean, I've coached with many of those coaches, and no, they, they take the pride just like I do. And your touchdown was kind of a fluke play, <laughs> but you'll take it. Hey, you any, work on anyway. that tip drill all the yeah. time, and yeah. it works. Any way we can get it, and, and really, I mean, tough tough break for, for Great Ben, but at the same time, great break for us, and sometimes that's the way the ball bounces. I thought you did a nice job on Josh Lopez. Unofficially, I have him for 31 carries and 108 yards, but he, and especially in the second half, he didn't have a carry over five yards by my book. I, I tell you what, and, and that's our linebacking crew, that's our defensive coordinator, Zach Baird, had a great game plan coming in and, and just does a wonderful job with these kids, and, and they bought in, and we're banking on the defense, and our offense is going to come around as we get used to You notice we were in gun the whole game, a one or two. Oh, there's a couple of yeah. you win, fourth and one, I yeah. think you win, but... And, and so we... Uh, just a little new style for us, it's a, and so it's going to take a little time to get into that, but we got to tell the districts to, to fine-tune it and, and be ready to go. A lot of positives out of this contest. You have a tough battle on Friday night with the lacrosse. Uh, no doubt. We, I don't know what they did yet, and we'll look at film tomorrow and, and see what we got there, but it, our, our schedule this year is not easy, and that's what we want. We want to be prepared by the time we get to districts and hopefully make a great run in the playoffs. That was my next question. You wanted to upgrade the schedule, and lacrosse will not be easy. Phillipsburg will not be easy. Larned was ahead of lacrosse at halftime tonight. They talk about how 
much more improved yeah. Marner will be. So it, it's not going to be an easy schedule. No, it, and that's the great thing. I mean, I mean, week in and week out, we're going to try to stay even keel and keep keep the same momentum every week, so we don't have any highs and lows like we did last year. It's hard to it's hard to come back on highs and lows. You want to keep even skelter and continue that throughout the season. Well, you have the phrase beforehand, silent assassins. Didn't quite come up with a victory, but proud of the way the young men played tonight. Very proud, very proud, and look forward to next week. Well, Coach, thank you, and uh, enjoy the weekend. And thank you. Have a good one. Head coach of the Washington Cardinals, Jason Ingram. Final score, Great Ben wins it by a score of 14 to 6. We'll be back and wrap it up from here. This is the post-game show brought to you by Marion Wilborn. You're listening to the Washington Cardinals on 100.7 Eagle Country. It's Gambino's Pizza Day today. Gambino's Pizza of Hoisington says take a break from cooking and dine in with them while enjoying something delicious from their daily buffet. The buffet is available for lunch 11 to 2 and every night 5 to 8. No lunch buffet on Sundays. Gambino's Pizza on Main Street in Hoisington. You're going to love it. Case Carquest in Hoisington is a proud sponsor of the Cardinals. Stop by for all your auto trucks, agriculture parts, hydraulic fittings, and hoses. And don't forget the full line of grasshopper lawnmowers. Go Cardinals. Suffering with headaches and back pain? There is help. Dr. Chad Beck with Beck Chiropractic is there when you need relief from life's aches and pains. Beck Chiropractic also specializing in sports medicine and proudly supports Cardinal Sports. Beck Chiropractic, downtown Hoisington. Cardinal Pharmacy is your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy and proud supporter of the Hoisington Cardinals. At Health Mart Pharmacy, they take time to get to know you and answer any questions you may have. Caring for you and about you. Cardinal Pharmacy. Go get them, Cardinals. Here's Paul Snap. For many years, First Kansas Bank has been awarded the highest five-star rating for safety and soundness. Over the years, First Kansas Bank has earned this coveted five-star rating by making high-quality loans and keeping our customers' money safe and sound. Member FDIC. When you're not performing at the top of your game, Clara Barton Therapy Services can evaluate and design a treatment program that will keep the Cardinal athletes and their supporters 